緊急事態発生緊急事態発生Hey everybody and happy Friday. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little bit of that kind of a cool little intro lineup there to the latest collaboration that we're going to be having going on in terms of the ASUS uh, and ROG uh, Evangelion uh, collaboration. So um, for those of you, of course, have been watching our social media channels and our group, you've of course been aware of, of course, the formal launch, the full lineup. We're actually going to be diving into just giving you guys uh, a recap of essentially the entire lineup as it is, uh, helping to give you the foundation in terms of course, what's going to be the uh, kind of launch strategy in terms of the availability for North America. Um, for those of you that might be joining us in other parts of the world, uh, fantastic. Thank you as always for joining us. Just keep in mind that a lot of what we cover here, uh, specifically on the PC DIY stream is always going to be specific to ASUS North America. Uh, but beyond that, we're also going to, of course, be touching on some UEFI updates, as we always do in the PC DIY stream. We've, of course, got some fantastic builds to be able to touch on here, as well in the ASUS PC DIY Builder Spotlight. We've got a brand new addition to the Noctua series graphics cards with the Noctua 3080 edition. We've got some cool promotions that we've got with a great partner in Kingston for some memory and SSD combos. Uh, got some cool uh, price promos as well on some ROG peripherals that we'll touch on, and a few other things uh, all together. So we've got a pretty packed show. Uh, let's go ahead and check out out and see what we've got going on. Looks like we have a, a nice set of people already joining us here for the stream. Uh, hey, Michael, thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, looks like Sumin's already got in on the action and actually taken advantage of the pre-order that we have for the actual uh, Evangelion uh, collaboration. So very, very cool. Uh, we've also got PGPCs joining us. Always fantastic to have you here. Uh, Erica, thank you so much as always. Also letting us know audio is coming through without any issues. Uh, we've got David also joining us here. Uh, Aaron Lopez, which actually I think we're going to be checking out one of your actually builds in the PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So very cool. And then uh, Connor, as always, man, fantastic to have you here. Zach as well. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, Kevin, another fantastic member of our community joining us here. So very, very cool. Uh, let's get ready to go ahead and kick this off and uh, talk about actually, um, I think first and foremost, we're not going to jump straight into Evangelion. I know that probably for a lot of you, that's what you first and foremost probably want to know about. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and touch on just some of the more general notes. So let me go ahead and jump into just a quick recap in terms of the ASUS UEFI uh, BIOS updates for this week. I have gone ahead and already posted them in the ASUS PC DIY group, uh, which I can go ahead and link you guys. If you're not already part of a group, uh, it'd be fantastic to have you join us there in the PC DIY community. It's a fantastic group of like-minded individuals that are all about the ASUS PC DIY hardware experience. So if you're into building, overclocking, modding, water cooling, whatever it might be, uh, small form factor builds to, of course, ATX builds, it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got builders across the board that join us there in the community. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and just share the little link that we've got here, and you can actually take a look at it and see what it looks like when I do post these. So let me go ahead and just share this with you. So you'll actually see right here, uh, we've gone ahead and posted the full list. Uh, it's predominantly going to actually be a continuation of our UEFI releases that incorporated the AMD Agisa 1.2.0.7 release, uh, which is predominantly focused for users that, of course, wanted to integrate support for the latest generation of AMD series CPUs, like the 5800X3D, as well as the large number of other uh, CPUs that AMD has released in this recent refresh. And also for those that were experiencing FTPM stutter, uh, this Agisa helps to resolve that. Uh, there are going to be also some miscellaneous updates for some users that are going to be on the Intel side of the fence for Z590, B560, Z, uh, excuse me, H610, and Q670. But overall, the majority of the users that should be kind of paying attention to this would be users on the entry-level side of the side, which would be for A320-based uh, 320 based motherboards. We've already gone ahead and previously released it for pretty much all, not all, but just about the majority of all 400 series and 500 series motherboards. If you actually want to take a look through that FAQ, this gives you a lot of good information on things you would want to keep in mind in terms of the UEFI updates. And then you'll see the actual boards listed there uh, in, in a breakdown, right? So we've got AMD-based boards and Intel-based motherboards. And there's, uh, of course, a link of me uh, for an actual video 
video that if you're not familiar on how to actually go through the UEFI updating process, um, click on that little link in the video, you'll be good to go, and it will help you actually to go through the entire UEFI updating process. So um, before we go ahead and move that on, let me just go ahead and check, uh, see if we've got any good questions there. Um, hey, uh, what's the link on the pre-order? Don't worry, we're going to go ahead and include links to the current pre-orders that we'll initially have for uh, the ROG and Evangelion um, collab, uh, which will initially be for the motherboard or for the GPU, and then the rest of the hardware, we're going to keep um, essentially putting that information out as we have it available. So no worries, uh, you have haven't missed out on that information. So uh, you're going to be good to go in that. Um, so let's go ahead and let me just drop the link there uh, for the group for those that may be interested in joining us in there. All right, great. So that gets us taken care of there in terms of our UEFI announcement. So we're all set there. Um, so now let's go ahead and actually, I think, jump straight into it, which is going to be, of course, uh, the ROG Evangelion uh, lineup announcement. So of course, this has been a long time coming, something that we're really excited to be able to go ahead and talk about. Uh, really just an awesome range of hardware that we have to be able to go ahead and show off. I already showed you off, uh, of course, a very cool uh, little teaser video. And of course, here, you can see a great example of actually what this will look like if you had the opportunity uh, to be able to pick up all this hardware and put it together. So this is quite an expansive lineup. This is going to be similar to what we've done in the past uh, with uh, other IP collaborations like what we did with uh, the Gundam, as well as also what we've done with, let's say, Call of Duty, where you can see that everything from we've got motherboard, graphics card, peripherals, monitors, router, even things uh, like the actual gaming surface with our scabbard and the Arion. So we're going to go through, actually highlight each one of the products specifically. I'll show you a little bit of kind of cool video for each one of these. If you guys have questions, let me know. I will go ahead and drop the links in right now. Uh, for the actual pre-orders specifically for the motherboard and for the graphics card, because those are going to be the first items uh, that we will actually have available um, in terms of the actual pre-order. None of the other products yet have gone ahead and been listed. Um, and in terms of the overall availability, um, let me go ahead and actually see if I can confirm that. I think I should have that information here. Give me one second. So in terms of the expected kind of e-tailers, um, right now you can find a pre-order links that we'll have already for the ASUS store, which is going to be the ASUS North American website, um, where we essentially have a buying functionality built in. So when you essentially go to the product page, you can click onto it and you'll be good to go. We will also be working uh, to be able to have the product release. Um, not entirely across what we would refer to the channel, but pretty broad in terms of channel availability. So this will include Amazon, um, Amazon CA, so for our friends over in Canada, uh, Micro Center, Newegg, which would also be Newegg Canada, uh, Canada Computers, and Memory Express. There may be some additional e-tailers over the coming weeks that also will see introduction to be able to carry some of this actual product portfolio. But as of right now, that's what we initially have confirmed uh, for the overall availability. Um, so let me go ahead and just quickly show you the links in terms of what it looked like um, before I drop these in the chat. So you'll see right here, here we actually have uh, the Maximus C690 Hero. Um, and you'll see it's already got the price. Uh, it's already listed 649. And then you'll have a little notify me button. Uh, it has not yet actively been listed and not ready to go ahead and ship out. Uh, Newegg has also gone ahead and listed it as an active pre-order available as well. Has not shipped out. Probably shipping um, won't happen until about the very end of this month, the very beginning of next month in terms of the relative time frame. Uh, we also do have the pre-orders active um, in terms of the listing for the two GPUs that we will have available for this collaboration, which will be the RTX 3090. And then this will be the RTX 3080. This is going to be the 12 gigabyte edition as opposed to the standard model. So you're going to get a little bit of a bump up in terms of the GPU from a standard 3080 class. This will be the 3080, kind of the higher end variant of it, uh, 12 gigabyte version. And this is also an OC model. And if you're not aware, kind of some of the design features and functions, we're not going to dive into every single kind of feature and function because most of these products, we of course already had out for some time. These are essentially going to just be the um, Evangelion additions of them. Um, but I will kind of touch on some of the kind of cool features and functions as we kind of go through each one of the respective products. All right. So let me go ahead and drop these links in, in the chat there for you, though, for those that are going to be interested. So uh, give me one second here. Um, no information yet on the rest of the MSRP. So in terms of uh, you're asking about the Helios, um, which we will actually be showing off in a little bit, don't have that MSRP pricing for you yet. Okay. 
Um, but uh, uh, pretty much your best place to be able to find out about this information as soon as we have it um, is going to be um, making sure to keep tuned to the ASUS PCDIY group. Um, of course, I will be covering this information every Friday as we keep moving through the actual respective launch. But if you kind of want to be kept most up to date, being part of the group um, is going to be the best place because that's where I'm essentially going to be able to post the information pretty much on a daily basis as soon as I can go ahead and uh, get that information from our product management team. Okay. All right. So I've gone ahead and drop the three links there in the chat for those that are interested. Um, and I will also go ahead and let me just drop in the link there as well for the Newegg if you guys are interested in also having access to the Newegg link as well, okay? All right, so that is that. So let's get ready to go ahead and jump into, um, first actually, let me actually show you uh, the website that we will have available to you. Uh, the website will actually give you a good breakdown of kind of all the key information for this. So it actually shows you all the products that we have in terms of this lineup. So again, you'll actually see right here, we've got the ROG Strix Scope keyboard. We have the XG279 um, uh, XQM. Uh, it's going to be our gaming monitor right here. We have the ROG Strix Arion, uh, of course, uh, high speed 10 gigabit uh, external SSD. We have the Scabbard 2. We have the Kyrus Wireless. We have the Delta S. Uh, we have the Thor power supply, the Helios chassis, uh, the 3080 and 3090 base graphics cards, uh, the Maximus Z690, and then the uh, GTAX 6000 router. And then we'll also have the Ryogen 2. And then we will also uh, have some uh, limited edition apparel. It is important to keep in mind that all of these products will not be essentially be run in production indefinitely. These will be limited edition products with limited edition quantities. Um, so uh, I can't give you full confirmation yet in terms of any of the quantity information, but they will definitely be produced in a more limited allocation than we would have for our traditional products. So if you are really interested in picking these up, once the actual new orders become available, you are definitely going to want to you know, take a look at those links and see if it's something sensible for you and then commit to that um, because the likelihood that we may be restocking some of these could become more variable. Um, if we use as an example, take for the Gundam series, uh, once the actual kind of initial allotment sold out, we didn't do any restocking at all. The only restock that came was quite a bit later, about three uh, months later uh, that we had on some of the peripherals and that was pretty much it. So when it sells out, it sells out and it's gone. It's not going to be coming back. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind that if this is something you're really interested in, um, then take advantage of it. I also do want to make a point too that, um, uh, you know, Asus is a global company and we're launching this in other regions. And so you may see some e-tailers maybe importing these products, but ideally, if you do want to make sure to have everything be shipped in terms of North America, also make sure that it adheres to Asus North American warranty policies. You do want to make sure that you're purchasing um, from either, let's say, Asus directly, or let's say ship and sold from Amazon or ship and sold from Newegg. Uh, be cautionary if you're purchasing from a third party marketplace where they may be importing the product. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Uh, let's go ahead and, as I said, noted here, if you take a look here at the site, uh, you'll see a really cool breakdown where you can go ahead and click on each one of the components. And as you click on each one of the components, it will give you essentially kind of that product page specific for that model. And you'll be able to see the information for each one of those respective products. Okay. Um, and we also do have a Canadian version of this. And over time, this will also be updated to have more links for the rare to buy. So as of right now, you can see the ASU store, but this will expand out to include other e-tailers as well. Okay. Hey, Zach, no information on anything that may be in, under design or development or essentially under NDA. As always, when we have the opportunity to be able to go ahead and touch on anything, uh, as soon as it's been made available, rest assured, again, the first place I'm going to talk about it is going to be in the group. And then after uh, will be in, of course, any one of our streams. So uh, if you're interested in making sure to keep up to date in that, make sure to go ahead and keep up to date in that respect. Okay. All right. So um, let's go ahead and jump into uh, some of the products that we've got here in terms of the actual lineup. So uh, what do I have first that we can take a look at? All right. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe take a look at the router first. And actually, uh, let's go ahead and actually just take a look at some of the general images in terms of kind of the, the lineup as it is first. And then we'll actually go into uh, this products a little bit more specifically here. Right here. So here's just a great example, again, of the setup all kind of lit up. You can see really the beautiful kind of color symmetry and, of course, the unique ID styling that really kind of brings this world and this um, kind of IP collaboration all together. I really love the look of the actual router, which is going to be the first product that we're going to touch on. But they really do have a harmonious look and feel that I think really looks fantastic. And, of course, really kind of ties together both things beautifully, right? The uh, ROG kind of base ID design 
that is present within these products. And then of course, bringing the getting on animation kind of ID and design into it um, just really helps to kind of take it even further, right? So here you can see, of course, the monitor, and you can also see the Helios chassis. The Helios, of course, has this beautiful triple layered um, tempered glass uh, front panel, which really gives it a kind of cool design aesthetic. Um, and then from there, it also does actually have a soft level of kind of translucentness. So essentially kind of has a little bit of visibility through it. And then of course, this also does have lighting. So once this actually illuminates, it adds an entirely different element to it. Uh, of course, with the monitor here, you also have integrated RGB lighting. It has a really cool design aesthetic. And that's all the way brought through the entirety of the base design, which looks really cool. This also does still support the ROG desk mount kit, which while it's not exactly of course, color centric. It's a monochrome design, so it'll you know complement the overall look and feel because um, you know it's working with kind of gray tones. If you did want to go with a C clamp mounting design for uh, the monitor. Okay, uh, here we've got a little bit closer shot of the GTAX 6000. Uh, this is going to be an outstanding, very high performance um, quad core, two gigahertz. 2.5 gigabits networking, outstanding range, great throughput options. So if you haven't jumped up into Wi-Fi 6 and, you know, 2.5 gigabits, you know, networking, this is going to be an outstanding option for you. Plus it looks really cool, right? Um, and here's, of course, the kind of a breakdown of the entire peripheral lineup that you'll have. So we've got the ROG Strict Scope RX, which is going to feature our RX optical switches. Really, really nice, smooth switches, outstanding in terms of performance reliability. This is actually a full IP rated keyboard. So dust, debris, dander, even water, you could spill it on the keyboard. It doesn't matter. It's not going to ingress into the PCB or into the switches or anything like that. Um, it has really, really great feel because of the actual um, specialized stem design that we have on here, which really significantly reduces keycap wobble on there. It's got a really cool, clean design, hardware level lighting controls, onboard memory profiles, um, and of course, just a really cool design aesthetic. We've got the Curious Wireless right here, which is wired and wireless and Bluetooth. Comes with those premium RG micro switches. Tons of kind of optional side customization options here. here. Uh, the Delta S, which is a really great USB-C quad DAC uh, headset and headphone with dual ear cups and a lot of other things. And then the ROG Scabbard 2, which even has a nano coating on it, which helps to repel dust, debris, dander, things like that. And really has a really outstanding level of kind of tracking performance for really any type of sensor. And got the Maximus Z690 board there. Uh, this is the Hero. And then, of course, we have the RTX 3080 and 30i, which are going to, of course, feature our advanced axial tech based fans, Max Tech, excuse me, Max Contact um, heat sink and fan assembly design, which is going to really give you outstanding cooling performance. And something that often gets overlooked on these cards, RG Strix cards always feature higher TGP and TGP um, board level ratings in terms of their power ratings, which alongside higher program clock speeds give you better performance. That's like one of the key kind of differentiation points between our Tough Gaming series or our Dual or any of our other series of graphics cards, right? But we're going to take a closer look at all of those elements in a little bit here. Uh, just wanted to kind of give you some of those cool little images because most of what we're going to be checking out here is going to be on the video side. So let's go ahead and uh, first take a look here uh, at the GT. I think, um, what do I have right here? Actually, let's go first with, let's go with the headset um, and we'll kind of go from there. And uh, if anybody has any questions on anything, feel free and let me know. Uh, let me see if we got any questions right there. A Cheetos dust proof. Sure. Um, definitely, you know, um, yes, it would be dust proof pretty much anything. And that's just actually because the switches themselves, uh, the way that they're designed, they essentially don't allow for any ingress in, which is really, really nice because in some standard keyboards, um, the actual switches and the underlying PCB can actually be more exposed. So if you were to spill something or even kind of dust debris and dander, things like that can actually settle on the inside of the keyboard over time and it can actually damage uh, the keyboard. So it can become a little bit actually more problematic. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here at our first uh, item. And this is going to be, uh, maybe I'll leave it on that view. So that is going to be the ROG 
uh, of course, Delta S, uh, which is very similar to the headset that I've got right here next to me, which is just the standard. Um, the cool thing here in terms of the actual Delta S is that the Delta S it features our AI noise canceling technology, which is built in on a hardware level. So that'll eliminate kind of any sounds that you have in the ambient environment, whether it's going to be the keyboard, whether it's going to be, you know, your air conditioning, dogs barking, all kinds of other things like that. It's fully detachable. It has an integrated quad DAC, which actually separates out different actually um, uh, excuse me, frequencies across the entirety of kind of the spectrum, which helps really give you good, really good detail and tonality. Um, because it's, of course, a native USB headset, um, it does have the flexibility that you can natively attach this to, you know, your Nintendo Switch, to your phone, to your laptop, to your desktop, right? All with that USB-C. And the big benefit of having essentially a quad DAC-based design is that you're going to get a consistent audio experience, whatever device you connect it to. When you use an analog-based headset, you're relying on the amp and the DAC that essentially is built into whatever device you're connecting it to. And that can essentially be quite variable, right? There can be kind of an okay DAC or amp maybe on your laptop, a much better one on your motherboard, an okay one on the switch, and maybe a really poor one on your phone. It can really vary. And But having it natively built in allows us to also not only ensure consistent experience across all those devices, but we can actually also more carefully tune what are called the drivers within the actual headphone themselves to be matched to the actual DAC and amp that we have as part of the headphone. So it allows for a really kind of seamless, great experience. Um, the Delta S is also lighter weight than the original Delta. So I find for people that feel that it, the original was maybe a little bit on the heavier side, it is gonna be even a, a more comfortable headset, but I feel it was already quite comfortable. And one really nice thing too, I'll show you on this model because you didn't clearly see it there, is that it does have a cool fold design. So if you could, well, you like to wear your headphones like this, you can entirely wear your headphones like this. There is a switch on the side that allows you to go ahead and control the RGB lighting. So if you wanted to turn off the RGB lighting um, to save a, um, you know, a battery on whatever connected device, you can do that. Remember the microphone is fully detachable. There's on ear cup volume control as well that is available on the unit. And the ear cups, uh, one cool thing in terms of the actual ear cups is that you can go ahead and remove the ear cups and two sets actually come included with um, the actual, excuse me, um, the headphone. So you have both kind of a more isolated and very comfortable uh, protein leather. And then you have a mesh hybrid ear cup, uh, which is really, really good if you're going to wear the headphones for like an extended period of time. So that is a quick recap there on the uh, Delta S. Okay. All right. Uh, next, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at um, the ROG Maximus board. So this is going to be the Maximus Z690 Hero board, pretty much my favorite board overall, I think in the ROG lineup, outstanding VRM and power delivery design, tons of M.2 expansion, that really cool polymo lighting based display on there, right? You've got pretty much every core feature, feature and function you want on there. There's a lot of stuff that we're gonna talk about that we just can't pack into this. If you wanna find out more about this specific board and you're interested, you can definitely watch our Z690 overview stream uh, where we talked about a lot of the really cool features on this board. Um, you know, some of the really cool stuff is right here. This actually has an eject button, which allows you to easily eject the actual graphics card once it's been installed. If you want to be able to go ahead and maybe easily access or readjust it or anything along those lines, um, you're going to have um, your, of course, USB-C, but this also does support right here. If you see that there's a six pin power connector, it actually supports up to 60 watt advanced USB PD power charging uh, through the actual USB-C port that's on here. It has an advanced water cooling zone that's down here on the board. Of course, you've got PCI Gen 5. This board will even support more M.2 because it also has an optional Hyper M.2 adding card that you can install on the board. Um, all the latest kind of IO specifications, including you've got Thunderbolt, you've got Wi-Fi 6E, high speed 2.5 gigabit LAN, um, pretty much you know, the best of the best, right? With an ROG board, we're really looking not to compromise on just kind of any of the key elements. And I really love the overall design aesthetic on here. That fully integrated IO shield also looks really great uh, on the board. So, and there are also some really cool kind of specialized features and functions built into UEFI and also um, included kind of in the specialized hardware design. So there's cool things like what we have, it's called a differential die sense monitoring design, which is a much more advanced and accurate way to um, have the actual voltage be monitored and detected for the actual CPU. So for people that really kind of want to tweak and tune and take advantage of things like our AIOC technology, which will easily, effectively, and reliably overclock the CPU, 
specific to your cooling solution, that all comes included with this board. So a really, really cool option for those that are looking to be able to, of course, jump into um, the latest generation Intel 12th Gen Series CPU. So it doesn't matter whether you want to install, uh, you know, put in a 12600, 12700, 12900, um, KS Series CPUs, every single one of them supported, and you're going to get a great experience that'll be stable and reliable, and it's going to look super sweet, right? And again, this one is already right now up for the pre-order. You can see just how cool it looks overall in the build. It looks pretty sweet, right? So uh, let's go ahead and let me just see here if we have any questions that have popped up before we keep moving along to some of the other next products right here. Um, Alonzo, thanks so much. Yeah, I would definitely agree. Some very, very cool stuff, right? Um, H2O, thanks so much uh, from a great PC DIY builder like yourselves. Also really cool to be able to see that you appreciate the overall design aesthetic. Um, hey, Val, sadly, we do not have a chair, a special edition in that regard, specifically for this collaboration. But, um, you know, we do, uh, I can't tell you all the details, but we will have maybe an upcoming chair coming a little bit later. So make sure to keep it tuned um, to, of course, uh, the ASUS PC DIY group in these streams to find out about maybe the next uh, ROG edition chair, right? Um, yeah, Connor, definitely, um, uh, I would agree. AI noise canceling is really cool. The other cool thing is that Maximus boards all come with Asus AI noise canceling too. So even if maybe you don't pick up the Delta headset, but you have your own headset, whether it's an analog or digital headset, we do have our Asus AI noise canceling that comes equipped over the motherboard and you can map it to any microphone that you're using, right? So that is a really cool level of functionality. Um, Val, yes, this is a DDR5 exclusive motherboard. All of our ROG Maximus series boards are only DDR5. We don't make any DDR4 versions. DDR4 is only going to be for our more um, entry-level boards. Um, so like in our um, ROG Strix lineup or in our Tough Gaming lineup or our Prime series. Yeah. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and keep moving this along. We'll go into our next product. Um, one of, I think, a really, really cool product that we've got right here. And this one is going to be with the actual Ryogen 2. So the Ryogen 2, you can see it right here next to me. It's an awesome cooler that we uh, have. Um, this cooler is just got a really cool kind of clean and distinct kind of design aesthetic that I think um, is very unique, right, in terms of its overall look and feel. Um, but uh, let me see. I thought I had a couple of other images for this one. So let me just see if I can pull them up here. Give me one second. And let me see if I have them over here. Ah, yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yep. Um, so before we show you that video, you can kind of get a little bit of a cool shot right here where you'll see that the actual pump housing, right? Uh, it's got really kind of cool iconography and typography right on it, right? And then you can also see, of course, a little bit of kind of just subtle accenting and designs that are throughout the entirety of the kind of the Ryogen 2 design, right? But uh, let's go ahead and actually take a look here at the uh, video that we've got and let you actually see it kind of in action there, right? All right, so here we can see we've got the Ryogen 2. Of course, this is going to be 360 millimeter base configuration, so you do need to make sure your chassis accommodates that. It is going to use that latest generation 7th gen base pump, right? Also has that VRM assist fan, which helps to provide some additional airflow to the surrounding VRM and to the uh, memory that you might have installed in the system. You get those nice little cable ties. Um, this is an outstanding, very high performance based cooling solution. So if you don't, you're going Intel or AMD, you're going to be good to go. This also will come included course with the 1700 bracket so again if you're going to be going 12th gen you're going to be entirely covered and the Ryogen 2 also comes included with a ARGB and fan controller inside the box which is what the fans would connect to um, but it does leave you some additional connections that if you want to maybe plug in another ARG fan or something like that you'll still have some optional connections you can run uh, from that controller box that comes included with it but overall it's really really cool a lot of people also forget that the Ryogen 2 does actually come included with a copy of ADA64. So the really cool thing about it coming with that ADA64 is that if you want to be able to customize the stat display and uh, pretty much do whatever you want with it, so you can have different values that you've defined within ADA64, there's a full one-year licensed version that comes with that. So normally if you bought that, that's like about, I think it's like about 30 bucks approximately. 
that comes already included with the Ryogen 2, so that's really cool. And then at Armory Crate, we kind of keep always refining and improving the functionality. Um, you know, this version compared to the prior version supported much, much higher and much higher quality GIFs if you want to be able to incorporate images and things along those lines compared to the prior one that had much kind of, it had restrictions in terms of the amount of memory in terms of what you could load on. So it's quite a bit more robust uh, for this generation. That big 3.5 inch display is great. Um, and then you also, um, have actually up to quad level display output within the Armory Crate software. And so what I mean by quad is that you can actually have up to four different stat values that are reported in there. So you could have like CPU frequency, voltage, temperature, you could have all kinds of different values all defined within the Ryogen 2. So really, really cool in terms of that level of kind of functionality that's built in there. Um, hey, Zach, there is not going to be a desk um, from that. So we do, of course, have a great collaboration with IKEA, but there's no actually um, ROG EVA specific or Evangelion based desk uh, that's going to be available, right? So uh, let's go ahead and head over into the Scabbard 2. Scabbard 2 is going to be the large desk mat. So right here, I have the ROG sheath. Um, it's roughly about the same overall dimension. So it's a true desk mat. So it's really designed to kind of cover a large amount of the overall desk surface area. It's got a very kind of cool design aesthetic that you can see that has kind of all that kind of really cool iconography um, and kind of design elements that really kind of tie in the entire look and feel to everything. Um, this has a really, really smooth, specialized weave that is really nice and great for tracking. The big thing, though, is going to be the nano coating that's on there that helps to repel dust, debris, dander, oils, things like that. Because the most common thing that we actually found in terms of our polling and feedback from a lot of users is that over time, um, the actual gaming surface themselves tend to actually kind of really um, they kind of soak in, you know, your sweat, your dust, debris, dander, stuff like that in there. And then people always trying to figure out how they can clean them. So having the actual nano coating really helps to maximize the overall quality and the surface material and helps to really just give it a much overall longer lifespan while also giving really, really great smooth tracking performance, right? So, um, and it also is going to perfectly complement, um, of course, the current lineup that we have in terms of those items, right? Okay. So that is going to be the Scabbard 2. Um, let me see here. We've next, we've got this little cool guy. This is going to be the ROG, uh, Arion. So this is a high performance, 10 gigabits, um, M.2 based SSD enclosure. So maybe, you know, you have already got an awesome setup and you don't necessarily want to make an investment into getting everything, but maybe you want to have a little bit of something that's kind of cool. This is going to be a really cool little accessory, um, that you can go ahead and pick up that won't break the bank. Right. Um, but allows you to actually have something that's really cool and useful, you know, install your own M.2 SSD in there. You know, you can put a 500, uh, 500 gig, a uh, terabyte, two terabyte, doesn't matter in there, have up to 10 gigabits, which is literally fast enough that if you want to run external games or applications from a drive, be able to have a drive that you could back up your information to, move from things to thing, look really cool, have a little bit of RGB lighting. I think it's a really cool accessory that you can add on. So, um, you know, and it comes with some other cool little stuff like the clip and the keychain. So if you want to be able to go ahead and easily attach it to like a bag or something like that, then you can do that. I know that we've got quite a number of people in the group that do like, um, the uh, Arion and they do use it. Um, so if you kind of want to find out from people that have already used it, you know, again, just join our group and you can find out about people that have already utilized it. But I use it almost on a daily basis. I keep a lot of my drivers, test benchmarks, applications, stuff like that loaded up on there. Um, like I said, you can have a one terabyte, two terabyte drive on there and easily swap it out as needed and you're good to go, right? There we go. We got uh, PGPC is giving us a little bit of a shout out, letting us know that he's got one. He says it's awesome. So very, very cool. Hey, Abdul, uh, thanks so much, man. I uh, hope you're doing well as well. So thanks so much for joining us here for the stream. All right. So next up, let's see. Uh, we've got now the graphics card, right? Um, so uh, I'm sure, of course, most of you have already seen, of course, the beautiful cards that we already have in terms of our ROG Strix Series graphics cards. Um, this is going to be for the 3080 and for the 3090. This is, of course, going to feature that uh, triple fan design with our axial take base fans, which have great static pressure performance, that really cool ARGB lighting zone that's going to be on the side, which is still customizable, that higher than standard TGP and TBP um, board power limits to be able to give you even better performance, dual V BIOS design. It also features our advanced max contact uh, heatsink. That means that the actual base plate is machined finish for actually superior, actually, um, 
kind of a smoothness. So it's very, very similar to a high quality kind of water block, which gives us very, very good temperature performance. Um, it's an outstanding thermal solution, which will keep the card cool, quiet, and fast. Um, so it's great. Uh, it has our PCI uh, monitoring circuit built in there, which means that the LEDs don't just detect that you have the power plugged in, but if we actually detect that the actual ATX operating output from the power supply is deviating more than 10%, lights on the card will blink, helping you to know that maybe your PSU may be kind of be operating a little bit out of specification. Doesn't necessarily mean that your PSU is failing, but it could be an indicator that might be a little bit more marginal, um, you know, or maybe that you're overtly stressing the power supply in terms of your total power configuration, or just kind of just giving you a little bit more information, right? Um, so very, very cool. Um, you know, otherwise all the kind of core elements in terms of the design are going to be the same as what we have on our standard graphics card. Um, hopefully nobody would water block this, but the topology is the same as our standard card. So you could still totally water block this card, but part of the real reason to buy this is for that really unique design aesthetic, right? So, um, you know, I think you would want to keep it in that air cooled configuration. So again, that will be uh, available both in a 3080 and in a 3090. And for the 3080, it will be for the 12 gigabyte version. Um, hey, Val, the reason why they say out of stock for the two that I've already linked is essentially not because they're actually out of stock. They haven't actually sold. They just hit right now for essentially pre-order. And if they essentially say out of notification, that means that we've just gone ahead and listed, but the pre-orders haven't fully gone active yet. So you want to essentially continue to monitor to be able to actually pick up on that. So some of the e-tailers like Newegg right now have already essentially some of that quantity confirmation in place. So you can go over and you can make the essentially the pre-order purchase already at that time. Uh, but some of the ones like I'll take, for instance, on the Asus e-store are in an out of, uh, excuse me, a, a notification. So you essentially would want to click notify and then once it gets actually listed for you to purchase it then you'll be able to purchase it all right um hey yeah a run i don't know why somebody would water block it we've had some people do that in the past with the gundam editions um it doesn't necessarily make the most sense but some people have kind of done it um but you know uh i guess if you really want a card and you got that card and for some reason you know you still wanted water cool it later maybe you wanted to do that um although you know we really tried to design the rg cards to give you a great experience already out of the box right and there is some merit right of course an rg strix card is still going to be faster and have benefits compared to like a standard design card or even an fe card because of those tgp and tgp but ideally because the um, the Evangelion cards are going to have a little bit of a premium, right? They're going to be a little bit more expensive. I think like take for instance, the GPU is about a hundred dollar premium um, compared to our standard card. It would make more sense that if you're going to water cool it, just buy the standard Strix card. Don't buy the Evangelion edition, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at maybe, I don't know if it's my favorite. I think it might be my favorite thing in the lineup, which is going to be the Helios. I think the Helios looks super <laughs> cool. Um, the other board looks really, really cool too. But uh, of course, you get really all the cool design elements of the Helios. It's got a really cool design aesthetic. It has, of course, the handles. You get that massive I.O. that this Helios chassis has where you got four front USB. You've got the USB-C. You've got the integrated graphics card holder. You have, of course, the shroud integration there for being able to show off your Thor power supply. It has an integrated ARGB and fan controller in there. You've got that really cool tempered glass side effect uh, that it has on the front and then also on both sides, right? Uh, of the chassis, good accessible clean cable management, tons of room there for be able to run any type of cooling configuration, including custom water cooling to air cool configurations. The Helios can do it all. Um, I will tell you, if you've never had the chance to get your hands on a Helios, it's a big chassis and it's heavy. So, you know, you definitely want to make sure you've got space and you've got, you know, that, that room to be able to, uh, you know, deal with it. But if you're looking for a really cool and distinctive build, the Helios is a fantastic chassis to, I think, be able to build on. Very, very, very cool. Um, so that is going to be uh, the Helios um, for this edition. All right. Um, next, we've got the ROG Strix Scope. So this is going to be also one of my favorite keyboards right here. Um, and again, this is going to be featuring our ROG um, RX optical based switches, which right here, of course, you can see this cool kind of a little exploded view where you can see that we have this wobble free 
four cornered latch, and then also X bracing mechanism. So the X bracing mechanism helps to really actually have the switch have a consistent feel up and down as opposed to uh, with a traditional switch, you're going to be heavily relying on just like a, 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 a slimmer spring. And then also it's going to be actually center weighted and which is actually causes what's called more force deviation or wobble in the four corners. So going to this hollow stem with the four point actually cap design really gives it really nice consistent feel. So when you're actually hitting these caps, especially if you're a faster typer, whether you're hitting it in the corner or the bottom, it has a really nice consistent feel to it. So I'm a real big fan of the RX base switches. Um, they will be available in reds, so your kind of standard linears, and blues if you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit more on that clicky side of the fence, right? As you can see right there, full IP57 um, rating, right? So you can see right there, literally, even if water gets in there, it doesn't matter because of the way it's all been sealed. The other cool part right there is that we have kind of really tried to keep still the going with the color theme, right? Which is, you know, purple and RGB you know, you're going to be in an interesting situation on how much of that lighting pattern you want to be able to kind of show off. But this still uses the um, RX LED design, which means that it's centrally mounted, which gives it a really nice, clean kind of 360 degree level of uh, uh, diffusion around the switch housing, which is clear. So very, very cool design. Um, onboard memory, right, with multiple profile support. You have hardware level lighting, so you don't even need to use software if you want to change some of the lighting modes that you can do on the unit. This one also does have a USB pass through on it. And uh, the regular version is actually very inexpensive. It's only about a hundred dollar keyboard. I think te technically the MSRP is a little bit more. It's like one twenty nine, but we off and on a lot of times we have promos that are for around like a hundred dollars. So this one won't be really that much more. It'll be just a little bit of a premium, but really really cool uh, keyboard that we'll have on this one. Okay, and. Next, we've got the monitor. So this would be the ROG Strix XG27AQM. Uh, so this will be a great choice if you're looking to upgrade to, of course, um, you know, a high refresh rate gaming monitor that is really going to give you great color accuracy, high brightness, and really just give you a great experience. This is kind of like a great just general purpose gaming monitor, but it looks really cool with, of course, the design, right? So 1440p. Uh, very low response time, right? G-Sync compatible. It has an integrated hub. It has display widget support in there. Um, it has our ELMB sync technology. So really kind of, it's a great representation of a current generation, just high quality ROG gaming display. I really think that if you're coming from a much older panel, or if you're still on 1080p, this is a perfect monitor to be able to jump into in general. Uh, but at the same time, if you, you, know, you really, really like the design, um, a really cool choice to be able to just step into um, if you're looking for 1440p and high refresh rate. So the next one that we're going to show, I think is going to be the Thor 2. And the Thor 2, I'm also going to show you some of the other images because there's some really cool things about the way that the Thor 2 has been packaged specifically that look really, really cool. Um, what case did you use as the feature build? That'll actually build, that will be in one of the PC Web Builder Spotlight. So I will actually touch on the components that will um, be Featuring on that when we actually get to the PCDI Web Builder Spotlight bait. Um, excuse me, Nate. Um, Zach, actually, the Helios works fine for EATX. You can fit an EATX chassis in the Helios. I've built an, an e, uh, with the Helios in an EATX chassis. Okay, so here we've got the Thor. Uh, this is actually going to be the Thor 2. And so you'll see right here already, of course, you're going to have a very cool, very high performance based power supply, um, premium design with the ROG heat sinks and topology, of course, a high performance fan to keep everything super nice and cool. But that fan most of the time is never going to turn on, has a synchronized RGB lighting. It has that OLED uh, wattage display that's built on there as well. Um, and then, of course, it also already comes included with individually sleeved premium cables. And you're also going to have PCI Gen 5 readiness uh, with this actually power supply, which is cool. So it will be certified for the next generation of graphics cards that will be coming to the market. So this is going to be a very, very cool um, monitor is the same. Yes, the monitor is the same as the Gundam Edition. It, it's just essentially different design. So they're both were the XG27 AQMs. Yeah. So um, let me go ahead and actually show you some of the images, though, on this uh, Thor power supply, which is pretty sweet. So let me go ahead and just pull up some of my images that I got right here. Uh, 
do I have them here? Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the just the general recap images for just some of the items that I think you know they they merit a little bit of a closer look. So here's the ROG Strix um, Scope RX, which you can see it's got a really cool kind of just design uh, through the entirety of the top shell, right? Along with the really cool keycaps, right? Uh, you can see, of course, the ROG RX switches, which, as I noted, right, they have that central mounting design, uh, translucent housing around there, and that four-point stem design along with that X stabilizer, which really allows it to feel really, really cool. Again, that IP rating, and you can also see it comes included with that really cool ROG uh, keycap puller, right, if you need to go ahead and pull out your keycaps. So here is the ROG Kiris uh, wired and wireless gaming mouse. As I noted, this is going to be a tri-mode mouse. So that means that this is going to be Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz gaming grade wireless, and also USB-C. And it comes with a really nice, super super lightweight, super uh, outstanding quality in terms of our RG Paracord cable. It's about the lightest weight cable I've felt in terms of cables. And I've compared this to other companies like Razer and Glorious and SteelSeries. Um, we really did an outstanding job on this RG Paracord cable. It's not going to give you any type of drag, super lightweight, really soft, really, really nice cable design. 100% PTFE feet that are going to come on here. These are our Omni feet. You actually get a second set of feet, feet skates inside the box, which is great. It also comes with a second set of switches. And this key, uh, mouse, just like all of our other mice, feature um, the ability to have our push fit socket design. So you can customize and replace the switches if you want to go with different ones. But it already comes with our, our premium ROG um, micro switches, which are rated for 70 million. And then they also feature an, uh, a gold-plated electro junction, which really helps to actually mitigate oxidation, which can actually cause um, actually issues over time, like double clicking and things like that. You can also see that it comes with three sets of buttons, which are pretty cool right here. So you've got one uh, color with the purple, another one kind of with that green uh, kind of color. And then you've got another one here with that kind of a little bit of kind of an orange color vibe, right? So very, very cool. And you can go ahead and swap those out however you'd like. Um, it's a really, really sweet design. Um, and this is a very cool. The only thing is I would say um, I can use this. I'm six foot two. I've got pretty big hands. I can use this, but I would say probably after about maybe about 45 minutes or an hour because I've got a little bit bigger hands. It doesn't favor a little bit more of a palm. You really would be more like a fingertip or claw style. Works a little bit better here because it's a little bit more compact. This would say it's not a small mace, small base mouse. I'd say it's medium, medium, smallish. So that's one thing is that just do keep in mind if you're interested in it, it's a little bit on the smaller side. And you can check out kind of dimensions and comparison information in some of other streams if you're interested. Okay, um, here is the Helios. Uh, you can see just some different shots of it with that really cool RGB aesthetic that it has there with the actual design. I think it looks fantastic. You can see from the different angles right there, um, it has that really cool tempered glass side panel pulls off the initial design details that are on the inside that cut out there for the actual PSU, the integrated actually graphics card holder, the actual um, routing options there for being able to go ahead and you know get all your cables cleanly routed in there. And then those straps, which some people wonder about the straps, but trust me, the straps come in really useful when you wanna move your chassis around and it weighs so much, you can actually really feel confident that you can move the actual chassis around. It's uh, pretty cool in terms of that, right? And here is the monitor. You can see the design from the front and the back all the way around. Really, really cool overall design. Um, it's got a really, really cool design aesthetic. Uh, hey, Nate B, um, I am going to be touching on the um, Noctua edition in just a little bit. We're just re getting ready to wrap out uh, the last items here in terms of the Evangelion. So no worries. Uh, we're going to be getting there in a little bit. And here is the Thor that I wanted to touch on. So the cool thing, look at that cool box that the Thor comes with, right? It comes with this really cool box. Like I almost wish the regular Thor um, came, comes with this actual box, right? But you get this really cool box that will actually contain the Thor 2 inside of it. You get these really cool um, sleeve cables right here and going to be red and black, right? You got that really cool design aesthetic on the actual power supply. Of course, this is RGB, so you can go ahead and you know change those out. You get your little cable combs in there. You go get your coupon with cable mods. You get three individual little slips right here. Also for um, your uh, hook and loop fasteners. So you can go ahead and do some cable management. And then also another like kind of specialized comb right there uh, for using for your cables. So some really, really cool little items. Again, I really love the box. 
totally that's like something you could use and you could put other stuff inside of it um but i really love the way that uh, the box just comes included with this thor 2. Um, Thor 2, I don't have a specific date for you yet, but we're hoping to probably have the majority of the items in um, next month. Like I said, you know, make sure to keep it tuned to the group. We'll give you kind of as, as quick, consistent updates as we can as we're getting more and more products skewed in. Originally, the pre-orders weren't even going to be available until the very beginning of next month, but we pulled in the schedule to try to get these out to you as soon as possible. So that's the reason why we've gone ahead and already gotten listed, the, the motherboard and the graphics card. And we're going to probably be running pretty hot over the next few days. Um, to the next week and you know two weeks as we get the rest of the products in um, and get them skewed up in terms of their availability right so that is going to be the thor 2 uh, and then right here the graphics card right so you can just see it again kind of holistically from all the different angles really cool and distinctive design aesthetic from you know really from every single angle from top to bottom so whether you mount this cord horizontally which is my preferred orientation or when you go vertical um i love that and the Horizontal, you've got the really cool design aesthetic right here. Um, this really cool kind of R RTX kind of accent logo, this little design with the purple, and then uh, the the kind of customized um, light bar that we have on there. And then the really cool backplate, maybe one of the coolest backplates that I've ever seen us design. Um, I think it looks fantastic on this. But then if you went vertical, the vertical design looks also really, really cool. So um, really, you know, however you end up going doing it, it's going to look pretty sweet. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. So overall, I think that wraps up everything that I wanted to touch on. So we went through definitely quite a bit there in terms of covering, um, you know, the entire lineup in terms of the RG Evangelion uh, release. So again, three uh, products right now available in terms of the actual kind of pre-order and the notifications listing. And like I said, if you want to make sure to keep it up to date as we push out more of these products, just make sure to go ahead and join us in the ACS PCDIY group um, and watch our social media channels. Although generally I'm even faster than the social media channels. So I would recommend being part of the group if you want to find out as soon as these are going to be listed. Okay. Um, Hey, Val, in terms of whether the GPUs are SAG, I mean, these are the same GPUs that we've already had out for launch, and we have tens of people that already have these cards in there. Uh, SAG is kind of tricky. I mean, the ROG Strix cards, they already feature what is called an anti-SAG and um, an internal GPU brace, which helps to really kind of stabilize the card. But sometimes, depending on the metal within your chassis, some metals are softer, some are a little bit harder. Depends on the mix that the chassis vendor is using. You will sometimes notice that maybe a little bit more sag. I'd say overall, in most situations, it's not a lot. Um, it's going to look pretty clean, but some users may still prefer to have some form of bracket um, or some form of kind of brace to help to, kind of, you know, make sure the car is fully, fully streamlined, right? If that's you, then of course, we are going to have. Um, you know, three different uh, ROG brackets. We'll have the Herculex, we'll have the wing wall, and we'll also have the ROG Strix graphics card holder, but you can use anything you want. And um, I didn't note it here, and I don't know if I have an image on it, but these ROG Strix cards, they do feature our brace design. So I don't have a card here with me, but on the side of the card, excuse me, on the back end of the card, there's actually two screws. And the two screws allow you to use an offset bracket if the chassis supports it so that it looks really clean. So that if you actually want to brace the card, there's actually two screw points that are specifically on the back of the graphics card that you can screw into and keep the card entirely aligned. So uh, the cards are kind of really been designed to be able to give you a great experience in that regard. Okay. Uh, hey, Jurgen, uh, we actually have already accounted for that. Um, I don't think it's too short. I mean, I've built in ch multiple chassis with the Thor, but this version, I believe our customer service team is going to be getting an extended edition cable that will come with the Thor 2, specifically for users that might be building in something like the Helios and a very large chassis, and they want a little bit of kind of an extension. The cables won't be the, the same color as the ones inside the box. They'll be black, but we will be offering like an extension to be able to give you a little bit more flexibility for users that may need some more flexibility in terms of just the overall length of the card. Okay. All right. Um, so let's get ready to jump into our next product here. Uh, and go, sorry, gosh, so many Eva items. Um, all right, let's go into a very, very cool card, <laughs> figuratively and literally, and that's going to be the uh, brand new Asus GeForce RTX 3080 Noctua 2 Edition. Um, this is a very cool update uh, to a card that we previously came out with. So we originally had uh, a 3070, and we had a lot of people who were like, man, this is really cool. 
I'd love to see you guys even offer a higher end version of this. And so now we actually do have a 3080 edition uh, version that will be available in terms of the Noctua edition card. So some people wonder kind of what is the whole point of the Noctua edition? Um, the Noctua edition, it, it's not necessarily replacing any one of the cards in our lineup, whether it's going to be like the Tough Gaming or the ROG Strix cards. The goal here is really going to be purpose built for somebody that has a very high level of kind of preference, not only in terms of outstanding temperature performance, which our cards are already going to give you, but absolutely really the quietest operating experience. Now, our ROG Strix cards and our tough gaming cards are already going to be very, very quiet, but this card gets to really almost near silent level of operation when you talk about its cooling performance and its overall acoustic operation. And that's really where it's going to shine. It then also comes along with all the kind of design things that you would expect from ASUS with things like our ASUS auto extreme, auto extreme production process, where it's done in terms of the assembly from SMT advanced production process, right? To be able to design and assemble the cards as well as to validate the cards, right? So this does feature an entirely customized heatsink assembly. It's not the same heatsink assembly. The PCB in the card is essentially the Tough Gaming 3080 version of the card, but the actual heatsink itself has been revised. So it's actually a larger and revised cooler than what we use on our standard Tough Gaming graphics card. And that's done to specifically kind of optimize and align it to uh, the actual fans that come included. So the outstanding high performance NF fans that come from Noctua, where we've gone ahead and redesigned along with Noctua that heatsink and fan assembly to really maximize and benefit from these fans, right? So um, you do want to keep in mind, this is going to be a very, very large card. It's going to be coming in at 4.3 slots. So it is going to be not 4.1 yet. Um, it's a 4.3 slot card. So it is a very, very big um, card in terms of this. And um, hey, Zach, I know some people like the Chrome X, but there are people that really do like the classic design. I really like the classic design for Noctua. I don't have any problems with the brown. Um, brown perfectly complements and contrasts against monochrome, so black. So if you ever build just a black system, which everything you can get in black, this is a natural complement to that. So I see no reason to kind of do that. And it does allow it to have its kind of unique distinguishing design aesthetic, right? Um, so of course, you're going to have two of those A12 25 PWM based fans. Um, and the really impressive thing right here is that these fans are going to be going at a very low operating RPMs. So like I said, effectively almost being near silent in terms of the overall operation while giving you outstanding temperature performance. So our RTX cards were already going to be generally in the low 60s under gaming load. This card is going to be probably in the mid 50s to high 50s, but even at a lower acoustic footprint, right? So extremely impressive in terms of the fact that this card is essentially going to be near silent or even silent uh, because of course under light gaming dodes, uh, watching videos, uh, photography, general purpose, or editing, the fans won't even spin up because it still supports the zero dB operating mode, right? Um, you can see a little bit of that super high performance based heatsink fan assembly. The heatsink and fan assembly right here, this actually has more heat pipes than the prior Noctua 3070 based edition um, because this is even higher performing based version of the design. And this is going to be one of the big differences. The actual heatsink assembly right here and the max contact base plate, which is still machine finish in the standard Noctua base, excuse me, in the standard design as opposed to the Noctua design, we actually have a multi stage. A heat sink assembly. So there's actually a heat sink assembly that is for the memory. And then there's actually the base plate, which makes contact for the GPU. And this design, we've actually enlarged the entirety of that actual base plate to make contact for both the GPU and for the memory simultaneously. So this is a much larger plate. And the benefit of that is because here, since you have such a high level of airflow and static pressure, it all goes to one plate. And that allows us to even not only have lower GPU temperatures, but also lower memory temperatures, and then even a, a very extremely low VRM temperatures right there for the actual heat sink component that is making contact with the power stages and the, uh, excuse me, the power stages uh, for the actual VRM assembly. So it's an extremely high performance, very efficient, very, very effective uh, heat sink and fan assembly. Um, and here is, of course, just a little bit of information there on the ASUS Extreme Auto, de um, auto Design. Um, we've got, of course, a vented backplate implementation on this card as well, which is pretty much par for the course. This does feature an integrated GPU bracket, though, to, of course, also help to mitigate things like sag and torsion for the card. Uh, this is your display out configuration. So two HDMI, 2.1, DP, DP, DP. So you have a total of five display outputs. 
overall, very, very cool card. Uh, here it's got kind of the really cool side profile, which I really, really like this aesthetic when it's going to be in its horizontal base profile, but it does have that really cool aesthetic when it's vertical. So, you know, either or, you know, depending on what your preference is, right? And he, again, here you'll see the massive kind of heat sink. This is quite a bit larger than, like I said, the traditional base heat sink. And I'll show you a little bit of a comparison a little bit later. And there you go. So that is going to be the Noctua card. So for those that are going to be wondering in terms of the resident time frame, um, our first initial uh, inventory is going to be probably a little bit on the tight side in terms of the overall quantity availability. We may get it in by the very end of this month, but realistically, I'm probably expecting that it's not going to be available until the very first week of June, probably rolling into the second week of June. There's always a little bit of a balancing act when we take uh, in the products that are coming from headquarters from production and then getting them rolled out in terms of the logistics, in terms of our channel partners. So, you know, let's say New Egg Take, for instance, and that timeline is always variable. We don't know exactly what that's going to be like because it's dependent on a multitude of factors from, you know, not only uh, the port and warehouse processing timeframes, but then the logistic timeframes of those channel partners themselves. And that sometimes can be days or sometimes even can be a couple of weeks. So overall, I would roughly estimate that we're gonna be looking for availability towards the very end of the first week of June to the, moving into the second week of June, most likely for availability. If it happens to be a little bit earlier than that, we'll definitely give you notice in terms of the PCDIY group uh, for those that are gonna be interested in that. Um, just see if we have any questions right there that have kind of come up there. Um, let me see. Uh, hey, hello, Purple. Let me go ahead and actually link you there in the group. If anybody's um, actually in the group right now, uh, if they can drop a link, that would be great. But let me see if I can go ahead and bring it out quickly. Um, hey, hello. Even if you don't have actually Facebook, um, we do actually, the way that our group is structured, it does support what's called a visitor function. So you don't actually have to be part of it to be able to actually um, be able to post. Um, so you can still go ahead and post there, uh, but that is the best way that we have. You can of course always tag us on our social media channels, but I can tell you that it's quite a bit more challenging for us to be responsive uh, through those channels than it is to be part of the group. Or like I said, you can tag me and where I'm really kind of consistently providing those updates. So um, if you really do kind of want that as best option, then that is something to look into. We may look to maybe have some other communities later this year, but um, you know nothing guaranteed at this point right now. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, Nate. As of right now, there's no pre-order that we're going to have right now for the Noctua Edition card, and I don't believe any of the e-tailers will have it as listed as a pre-order. Sometimes they may change this, but as of right now, I don't believe they're going to be any pre-orders. So it'll pretty much just be a live listing. So once it gets it listed, it essentially be made available for purchase. Okay. Hey, Dead BC, I don't comment on anything that may under be under design or development or essentially under NDA. So uh, this is an uh, official channel. So uh, if it essentially hasn't been announced, we can't talk about it. OK. All right. So let me go ahead and again, just uh, drop that link in there, the chat for the group, if anybody has interest there. So let me go ahead and drop that in there. And uh, let me just also go ahead and quickly show uh, the comparison here that I wanted to show here in terms of the actual um, block design. So give me one second here. Bring this up here. Okay, very cool. And uh, where do I have this? Okay, here it is. Yep. Okay. So here you can see it. this is the actual heat sink design. So as I was talking about in the original design, you can see the actual max contact base plate was uh, quite a bit smaller. Uh, it was still very high performance because keep in mind the temperature performance already on the Tough Gaming graphics card is really just about class leading. The only card that had better uh, heat sink was the actual ROG Strix card. And some people get confused because they're like, sometimes the Strix card might be like one degree or two degrees hotter. So how is it better? Well, you have to think that actually the heat sink on the Strix card is about 15% larger, but it also had higher clocks because it was at a higher program clock speed. And it also had a higher TGP and TBP board rating, which means that actually it's actually dissipating more temperatures at effective, effectively the same temperature performance, right? But that being noted, um, you'll see actually right here, here's the actual heat sink portion that we had for the memory. And there was the base plate for the GPU. And the new design you can see in the Noctua edition, right? This has gone ahead and been uh, refined and is significantly larger, right? And allowing us to make, like I said, contact with both the GPU and with the memory, right? 
And then here you can also see that dimension wise, it's a significantly larger card, which is part of the reason why it's so much of a bigger card, right? It's 4.3 slots versus uh, the prior card, which is still large, right? But I think that one is under technically a three slot, right? It's a like 2.9 slot uh, base graphics card. So this is a significantly larger heatsink assembly. And then also you of course have the larger fans. Um, I will also note some people do ask, can you swap the fans? Um, these are really pretty much just about the best fans you can get. Um, I don't know why you would necessarily want to swap them. There is adhesive material that we actually use for the fans to bond them to the actual internal shroud and frame. Um, so you do have to be cautious that if you were to open it, there's only about four screws to essentially remove the shroud frame from the body. So if you did want to access it and swap out the fans, technically this is possible, but you would also want to be careful of that adhesive material. And then you would still need to remove the adhesive material, put that on the new fan, swap the fans out and then make that change. Okay. Um, so it, it's not necessarily ideal, um, but technically I suppose that it would be possible, right? Hey, David, uh, thanks so much. Yeah, so this might be another one of the sheets right here. This is uh, uh, the uh, reassemble kind of shirt that we've got. Last week, I wore the Omni shirt. So I'm, like I said, going to be talking to our team about maybe getting some custom shirts that we'll have available for the PC DIY group. So again, if you're not part of the group, you're going to want to be part of the group because uh, these are going to be exclusively only for people that are part of our group. All right. Um, so uh, that's correct. Yeah, Nate, no confirmation yet on the price. I'll have the MSRP probably in about a week and a half or so right now, right? So I can't give you the exact price point, um, and I don't want to give you a price point that, that could actually change. So once we actually have what's our, our internal actually price release to the channel, then we'll be able to confirm that. So um, I'll update the actual post that we have in the PCDIY group already with the new updated pricing um, as soon as we actually have the formal MSRP pricing. So, um, you know, just make sure to keep it tuned for that, okay? All right. So um, hopefully that answers your questions. And again, Nate, if you have any other questions that I didn't um, cover specifically for that Nacto card that you might be wondering about, feel free to go ahead and either tag me in the group, or you can also go ahead and email me pcdiy at asus.com. And I might do my best to go ahead and follow up with you when I can in that regard. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think that gets us covered there. So um, quite a number of pretty big updates um, in terms of, uh, you know, an entire range of really brand new products there with the uh, ROG Evangelion uh, collab release. And then we've got our Noctua edition graphics cards. So some pretty cool stuff there. So let's go ahead and bang out just some quick promotions that we've got going on for some cool stuff. And then we're going to get ready to jump into our Asus PCDIY uh, Builders Spotlight and move it on from there. All right, so the first things first here is let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. We've got some, uh, I believe, um, some promotions. Some of these promos are not 100% live yet, and some of them are um, that will be uh, for a collaboration that we have going on right now, I believe, with our friends over at Kingston. So uh, let me go ahead and see if I can pull this up. Yep, okay. And I will drop these in the chat so we can see right here, uh, we've got uh, one will be a combo kit, which will be um, for some Kingston Fury Beast memory, 32 gigabytes, uh, 3600 MT that you're going to have along with an ROG Strix B550F board right there. So nice little combo there that's going to be at $327. So that'll be paired together. And of course, that kit is fully compatible with Asus Aura Sync. Um, we're also going to have another kit here, which will be uh, for the other side of the fence. So if you want to be able to actually do something with Z590 and 11th gen uh, or 10th gen series CPU, which those you can actually get at a really great price point and still a fantastic performing CPU part, right? Similarly, um, this one is not yet active, but there will be a bundled price available with it. A Z690, if you want to step up to 12th gen, uh, where we have a combo right here. And this one will be with DDR5, and that will be with 5200 MT base memory. So that's going to be a little bit of a bump up compared to your standard baseline. Technically, it's an overclock because the baseline for uh, DDR5 is going to be 4800 MT. And then we've got another one with Z590 here, which will be with a one terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade one terabyte, very, very fast PCI Gen 4 M.2 uh, M SSD. That's actually one of the fastest drives you can get on the market. Uh, and then uh, lastly, right here, an X570-I, which will also have a 32 gigabyte kit uh, pairing 
for that looks like a pretty nice savings there say about 66 bucks uh in terms of a promo savings so i'm going to drop those all in the chat right now so if anybody's interested in checking out those combos they can definitely check those out so give me a second to drop those in the chat Yeah, Kevin, I don't know if that would be the greatest thing to, uh, the Noctua IPPC fans are great, but definitely those 3000 RPM, that is not, um, well, Noctua is definitely known for their quiet uh, operation, uh, regardless uh, that it's a Noctua fan at 3000 RPM, that is not going to be quiet. So, um, you know, I really, uh, you know, those IPPC fans are industrial rated fans. While we do include the IPPC fans with our Ryogen, right, most users are generally going to be running their fans at probably somewhere between eight to maybe about 1400 RPM, I'd say about the max end, um, because that's, you know, I think in the range that tends to be kind of the most reasonable, right? Really anything about under 1200 is quite good. Even 1400 RPM, uh, depending on the fan design and the tone and the bearing, um, it can still be quite reasonable. But once you really start to get over like 1800, it can definitely start to be quite a bit more noticeable. And I think for most people probably wouldn't be something that they would want to run continually, right? All right, so that takes us through there in terms of some cool promotions that we've got right there from uh, our friends over at Kingston. And I have two just quick promos uh, for you uh, for some other items right here. One is going to be 50 bucks off this keyboard right here. One of my favorite keyboards. This is the RG Falchion. This is our 65% wireless and wired keyboard. It's got a really cool level of functionality. It has an integrated touch bar in there, which you can customize for things like volume or different types of commands. It has onboard memory profiles macro support, hardware level lighting control. It comes actually with a really cool cover. Um, do I have it actually over here? I don't know if I have it over here, but it actually comes with a cover that you can um, actually place on top of it or you can place it underneath it as kind of like a little diffusion tray um, that's all included inside the box. So right now we actually do have both versions of this keyboard on promotion right now. So you'll see normally this is a $150 keyboard and right now you can get it for a hundred bucks. That's 50 bucks off, man. That's a huge price savings. Um, outstanding battery life up to 450 hours. Really cool compact keyboard. Has full per key RGB lighting. Like I said, that hardware level lighting support. There you can see that cool little diffusion tray, which also gives you a little bit of stability. It also changed the sound profile a little bit to be a little bit more dampened um, on the actual keyboard. That in cool integrated uh, touch panel that it also has on there. You can go ahead and, like I said, utilize this with either the USB-C cable for a wired connection or for 2.4 gigahertz low latency wireless. It has that premium PBT uh, double shot keycaps there. So that's going to resist, you know, sheen um, and, uh, you know, oil and anything like that over time to really make sure that those legends look clean, consistent and really nice. There is that included case that comes in the, in, and with it, which if you got prets or you got a dusty environment, that's really great because you can just put it on there. You never have to worry about anything getting on the inside of your keyboard. And if you ever want to travel with your keyboard, it is a really nice addition right there. I can see that we've got multiple switch options. I think right now the only ones that might be actively in stock are going to be the reds. I think the browns might be in stock uh, and the blues, uh, but the reds and the blues for sure, right? And you also have fast charging support on this unit as well. And we also have the little bit more premium version still at a price reduction. So 30 bucks off is we have the RG NX base switches. The RG NX base switches, for somebody that's a little bit more premium um, in terms of the switch quality, if you want something that actually has a little bit of lube to it, it's even a little bit smoother, has a nicer actuation level to it. And we actually have bend tolerances. A lot of people don't realize that um, switches, when they're mass produced, there's actually what is called gram force deviation. So if you took like a box of like 30 switches, actually not all the switches would be the same. Some switches are going to be a little bit more, some are going to be a little bit less. With RGNX switches, we actually bin them consistently at the production uh, facility to be within five grams force deviation of all switches. So that means that there's a much more consistent feel across all of the switches on the keyboard and gives you just an overall better experience. Along with that uh, lubing and the change in terms of the actuation and the reset point, I really love the way that those switches feel. I think they're a great, nice switch. So if you're looking for something a little bit of a step up, then you can go to the ROG NX, which featured the ROG uh, NX switches as opposed to your traditional Cherry MX switches. All the other features are exactly the same, and they're still traditional Cherry MX stems. So if you want to put different keycaps, even though this comes with PBT keycaps, you can do that. Um, so uh, both of these are going to be on promo. Uh, very, very nice price point, right? Like I said, 50 bucks off or 30 bucks off, pick the one that you want. 
Uh, let me go ahead and drop this in the chat right here. Hey, uh, let me see. Bill's got a question right here. Give me one second and I'll read your question. I'm running an ROG motherboard, um, 240 hertz. So I'm thinking maybe that's a 240 hertz monitor is what you're referring to. Okay. Um, with an Intel 7700K um, at five gigahertz and then an NVIDIA 6060 Ti, is it worth upgrading to the 3080 games that need more power? So yeah, if you've got a 240 hertz monitor with the 7700K, especially because you have it overclocked, you're making up for the fact that you're losing a little bit of frequency compared to more modern CPUs. So generally for most generations, we've generally seen an uplift of about 10% per every G CPU generation. You've actually jumped up quite a bit that, especially if you have that across actually all the cores and then also if you're running overclocked memory so that means you've actually got a pretty still strong cpu in terms of its overall gaming performance and um, going from a 1660 Ti to a 3080 would be a massive uplift. Even though you don't have PCI Gen 4 support um, or anything like that, you would still see a massive uplift, not only in your peak frame rate, but critically in your minimum in your average frame rates, right? Plus, you would be able to get some other really cool technologies like you'd be able to get DLSS, RTX, and all the other really cool stuff that comes along with the latest generation GPUs. So I definitely think, you know, you making an upgrade to a 3080 would be a fantastic choice, but you don't have to even jump up to 3080. Even jumping up to a 3060 would be a massive upgrade in terms of the overall gaming experience that you have right now. But if you do want to really, really be able to drive that 240 hertz, I think a 3080 would be a good choice. But a lot of this really comes down to the games, right? Um, what games are you going to be playing, right? If you're playing Overwatch and Valorant, you don't need to go all the way to a 3080, right? But you know, consider that in terms of what you're going to be kind of targeting, but uh, definitely you would still get a really big upgrade. And uh, for the 3080, we have quite a number of 3080 cards. I would probably recommend maybe our tough gaming series. You don't have to go all the way up to an RG Strix card. We have a few different 3080 cards that you could take a look at if that's something that you're interested in. All right. Um, one other promo that we also have going on, which I think is pretty nice. $40 promo on this monitor. Speaking of a high refresh rate monitor, we've got the VG258QM. This is a seriously fast monitor. It's 1080p, 280 hertz, ultra low response time, and really outstanding SDR brightness. This monitor, even though it's rated at display HDR 400, will consistently even actually on average do a little bit over 400 nits even under SDR and um, it has really actually good color reproduction even though this is actually a TN based panel so you're going to restrict a little bit in terms of the off uh, viewing access but if you're pretty much only looking you know uh, predominantly at the front of your monitor you don't really have to worry about this and it covers almost just about 100 percent of the RGB and if you take the time to calibrate this it could really almost offer outstanding color uh, delta accuracy so it's a really great monitor to give you a bright color accurate fast really fast uh gaming panel right and for this price it is kind of hard to beat right i mean 270 bucks right it's 40 dollars off for this ultra high refresh rate gaming monitor that offers g-sync compatibility it's bold it's bright it's fast um and is a really really nice option where you also still get ergonomic adjustments you get some pass-through support you have multiple display input connections right with hdmi and display port you have our game preset modes including things like shadow boost um, and you still also get um, ergonomics, which include height, swivel, and pivot, and tilt, which is actually rare kind of at these lower price points. And a lot of monitors, a lot of people forget, even when they're comparing this to other companies like Samsung or LG, for instance, all of our monitors come with a three-year warranty, where many other competitors in this same bracket only offer a one-year warranty. So um, I think this is a great uh, promo that we have available. So if you're interested in upgrading, then uh, definitely check that out. This is a really, really nice monitor uh, for, I think, the money, okay? All right, um, I think that probably takes care of pretty much all of our promotions that I wanted to be able to touch on. Um, so uh, we do, oh, sorry, got one last one. Let me go ahead and bring it up right here. And then we will get into our PC DIY Builder spot, Spotlight. Let me just see if we got any questions right there. The motherboard is 240. I don't know what you mean by that, Bill. Um, if you can clarify, it doesn't really matter. Um, 
I mean, you already have your motherboard defined in terms of the clock frequencies that you noted there. Um, so the motherboard isn't going to be an influencing factor because it's going to have a PCI Express slot. So the graphics card works in there. So really the only other component that would restrict you from being able to go to that GPU is going to be your power supply. So as long as you have a decent enough power supply to be able to support the 3080. So ideally, hopefully at least 750 watt, if not an 850 watt power supply, you're going to be fine. But speaking of power supplies, um, we actually have right now our entire line of ROG Strix power supplies on promotion. So if you've also been looking to be able to upgrade a power supply, um, right now, I think from top to bottom, go ahead and uh, pull this up for our US side here. Yeah, so you'll see right here, um, normally 179, but actually 124. But this would actually go, I think, for all of our models. So all the way from our 550 watt, all the way up to our 1000 watt. Um, these are all going to be on promotion right now. So uh, they all have a really big price savings right there. You're going to get that premium ROG design in terms of not only outstanding uh, topology internally, but also are kind of a higher end heat sink designs, which help to keep the uh, power supply even more thermally efficient, right? Which helps to actually reduce um, thermals on the actual PCB and the components, allows it to, of course, even operate more quietly so that the fans don't actually even spin up, right? These are gold series power supplies and also modular. You also get some nice, cool little aesthetic elements there too, if you've got visibility, but because this is not a Thor power supply, you don't have to worry about kind of making an investment in a power supply where if you don't have, of course, um, you know, a PSU shroud, then you don't have to worry kind of about showing it out. But this is the power supply right here. Um, this is one of, I think this one's our 750 or this is our 850. It doesn't matter. They're going to pretty much look identical. Again, fully modular, really nice design. It also comes with our axial tech based fan. So really nice static pressure ring barrier design, really nice, quiet, really good tone to it. Like I said, Great quality power supply and the entire range from the 550 watt all the way to the 1000 watt right now. They're all on promo. And I think with many of them having anywhere between like 55 bucks to some of them even having a little bit more than that in terms of the actual price reduction. Um, let me see if I made a note of that. Did I make a note of it? I thought I, thought I made a note of it. Um, yeah, from 55 to $80 off. So Pretty big price savings. I'm going to go ahead and just link the 750 watt model. But again, if you're interested, just search for any one of those ROG Strix power supplies and you'll be able to see the promotion pricing that we have available for them. Okay. Hey, David, thanks so much, man. Thanks for joining us here for the stream. Hey, Nate, um, let me see. I don't think I have a confirmed list yet of the e-tailers uh, for the Noctua series graphics card. Let me go ahead and double check my notes. Yeah, no confirmation yet. I can tell you for sure we will have it um, on Newegg. I'm sure we'll be a, a launch partner for it. Um, as far as whether or not it should probably be Newegg, Amazon, and our Asus e-store, whether or not other e-tailers will have it or retailers, I won't be able to tell you yet. When I have the MSRP pricing, I can confirm the e-tailers that will actually have it available. Like I said, that will probably maybe be in about seven to 10 days um, that I'll have that information. So make sure to just, like I said, keep it tuned or definitely follow up and I can make sure to give you that information, okay? But because that card will be a more what's called limited edition uh, based card in terms of its production quantity, it won't be what's called a channel wide SKU. So our channel wide SKUs would generally mean that you can kind of get it at like oh pretty much any e-tailer that carries uh, Asus products, which is usually going to be probably somewhere between about like 10 to about 15 different places. Um, it will not be a channel wide SKU. So we're probably going to be limited to probably somewhere between like three to six um, e-tailers. Um, hollow purple. I'll double check if you can actually email me on that. I believe if I remember correctly on the variant edition, I think it only has to actually do with, um, the ergonomics, uh, on the, uh, excuse me, on the adjustment uh, for the panel. I think if I remember, that's probably one of the only differences that it's on there. Uh, P RG six phone release? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, there was probably some interesting information that you saw with Snapdragon worked with Asus on being able to showcase their latest generation SoC. So maybe it might be something seen in the future. Some pretty cool stuff. As always, Asus is really at the forefront of technology, right? So we really like showing a lot of really cool stuff. So, all right, let's get ready to jump into our PC Dow Web Builder Spotlight. We've got some amazing builds. I don't know how many we're going to be able to get to, but we're going to try to get to as many of them as we can. So let's get ready to jump into them. And we will go from there. So let's go with our first build. 
And for those of you not aware of the PC Die Web Builder Spotlight, what we'd like to do here is just be able to show off your builds from the community that you've gone ahead and submitted to be able to showcase here on the stream. If you guys still have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever it might be, if it's on ASUS PC Die Web related, feel free to still drop your questions and I'll definitely still answer them as we're running through that stuff. So don't worry about that. All right. So first up, uh, let's see, we've got uh, a build that's very cool. It's a very small form factor build and um, uh, one that's not necessarily gaming focused, which is pretty cool. Just a really cool um, open actually frame, small form factor gaming build from Jacob over here. I believe it is called a Bennett. So let me go ahead and get actually submission form up. We'll get his images loaded up here and we'll take a look and see what he's got here for his system. So let's see here. Oh, pretty cool right here. So um, he's got a cool little setup right here. He's got it actually over here. Um, really nice. This is actually using the Intel, excuse me, the reference inbox cooler uh, from AMD. Um, and then from there, we got the little RGB memory. Looks like a little customization right here, which is pretty cool. Um, I like that. Really nice and clean, just right next to the, there to his, um, his uh, speakers. The good thing there about kind of bookshelf speakers is that these should actually have pretty good shielding because normally sometimes you might have to worry about a little bit of EMI this close to a speaker. But if he's running it without issues, then I would assume everything's running pretty well. So this is pretty cool. Looks like we've actually got a little bit of a wood frame right here, then base actually for the motherboard. He's got a compact, of course, SFX based PSU and looks like something that's been custom designed and developed to be able to go ahead and wrap around for the board and for the actual power supply. Got your cables there with some cable cones all going in. These are all custom length to keep everything nice and tidy, clean and compact. 600 watts, definitely more than you even need uh, for this class of system. But, um, you know, still, if you want to be able to have something really efficient, give yourself some headroom, it's nice, available right here. Of course, you got all your IO easily accessible right there. And this is all, of course, on an ROG Strix uh, board right there as well. So, it's a very cool little system. I really like the way this turned out. And really, uh, this is a really cool kind of design language that we have here for um, this. I'm assuming it's maybe 3D printed or maybe it could be cast. I'm not exactly sure, but this is pretty slick. I really like the way that this turned out. The only thing that you're missing out on a little bit is you don't have direct access to those front ports. Um, you know, you can get some like little accessories right here where you could actually get like a, um, uh, a bracket or like an actual... Um, excuse me, adapter to mount to that to be able to give you those front IO ports. But if you don't necessarily need them, you're not necessarily hurting on anything, right? And what kind of also could be cool is maybe if you use like a little strip that maybe go right in between here and run down here to give yourself some little bit of additional kind of fill lighting, that could be kind of cool, right? But, you know, um, I really like just how clean, compact, and simple this is. It's really nice, just true small form far form factor mini ITX based build. With a lot of people too, we make some really awesome mini PCs. This is a perfect example of that you could still totally do a DIY system that is truly compact and would be faster than pretty much about just almost any real mini PC because you don't have the wattage constriction that you have in so many mini PCs. A lot of mini PCs are generally going to be using somewhere between about a 6 to maybe 25, sometimes 30 watt class series CPU, although we have some that go up to 65 watts. Here you have full desktop class, so you're getting really the full performance of the uh uh, uh, excuse me, the integrated graphics and, of course, uh, the full desktop class performance from the CPU, right? Very cool. I really like the way this turned out. It's a really cool overall little build and setup. I think it looks really cool. Um, what are you guys' thoughts in terms of how this overall looks? I think it's pretty cool. The PSU support is self-made. Yeah, I think both of those elements, right? I'm pretty sure that the actual board where the board is mounting to, as well as actually the bracket for the um, the PSU and all of that has actually been self-made. So it's pretty cool. Um, Meg, what's the motherboard next to me? This one right here, this is the Maximus Z690 um, Extreme Board. So this is um, pretty much like, you know, flagship class. So this is our Z690 series Maximus Extreme. And then that's the Ryogen 2 right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the submission form and see what we've got. So this is going to be from Jacob. Um, this was actually his first build. Bravo. Hats off because very clean and well executed, especially for a first build. I like that you were willing to kind of just think out of the box and not have to go with something constrained. So that's pretty cool. Um, does the build have a theme? Um, he notes organic. The stand is a combination of stained wood panels supported by a resin 3D printed mesh base. So I was right in terms that it was 3D printed. And the aesthetic makes sense that this looks really clean because it's resin based, right? If you were using, um, you know, your kind of more traditional uh, 3D printing base 
ex uh, extrusion methods, it wouldn't look as kind of cool and clean as this kind of aesthetic, right? So I think that's really nice in terms of the way that looks. But that's where I was saying, I really think this could be pretty cool if maybe there was like a little LED strip that went from maybe one of these headers down underneath here to give a little bit of fill lighting to this little um, bit of this printed material. I think that could look pretty cool. But overall, uh, it's really, really nicely done. Three words to describe the build right here is minimal, organic, and tiny. Does the build have a name? Bennett is the name for the system. This is running off an RG Strix B550-I. He's got a Ryzen 5700G. Outstanding APU performance, right? So you've got, you know, really high performance, um, 16 threads in there, right? But you still have, of course, really nice, robust Radeon graphics engine in there. Um, he's then got 32 gigabytes of 3600 MT memory, and then a one terabyte Samsung 980 uh, NVMe, PCIe NVMe SSD. And then that's all running off of that Corsair SF 600 watt power supply along with the custom length cables. About $900 for the total price of the build. Um, he's overall really most proud of the originality, which I would say is a thumbs up in my book. Nothing that he would change about the build. It took about two days in terms of getting that done. And he uses actually for productivity for SolidWorks CAD. So that's pretty cool. Um, and he's overall kind of a favorite element in terms of the Asus hardware that he has in the build. It's actually the overall design aesthetic of the board. So overall, pretty cool, man. I give you my hands off. Uh, excuse me. Hats off to you, especially for being your first build. Uh, it's really nicely done. It's cool. No problem, man. Thank you so much. Very, very cool. All right. So let's go ahead and... Um, take a look at our next build here. All right, so give me one second here and we will jump into our next build. Next build is gonna be from our friends over at Critical Error Computing. They've always uh, submitted really cool and kind of interesting in, uh, builds that have definitely a distinctive design aesthetic that um, is not really kind of the, uh, the same thing that uh, kind of a lot of people do. So I'm interested to see what they're bringing to the table here with their build. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Ooh, very interesting. Ooh, this is even more interesting. Okay, so this is critical geometry, and bam, right off the bat, we can definitely see that we've got something that looks a little bit different. It's got a very diff distinctive and kind of interesting design. So we can see that we've got a um, this very interesting course uh, chassis that was previously done where we actually had a cool build that we showed this off in before, um, but we're going with a full external radiator setup. And from the size of that external rad, that probably is looking to be I don't even think 480, that might be a 560 radiator, which is massive, right? So we've got tons of cooling performance, which also means that hopefully we should be able to keep those fans super, super low, right? So ideally maybe sub 1000 RPM. So you really effectively almost have silent operation for an extremely high level of a thermal dissipation performance, right? So even if you were pushing that GPU and that CPU, because you've got so much a displacement, right? You can keep things really, really well cooled. Um, I really love the color scheme. This kind of orange and purple and blue vibes are really, really cool. I love kind of the more fluid and organic forms here of not going with kind of like a hard line or kind of more geometric kind of forms. I really like the kind of more curvature in here. I think it plays around and it offers an interesting contrast against the hard geometry that you have within the chassis. We can see that they've also gone ahead and added in a very cool panel in here um, that has something in there. Yeah, Kevin, I believe that you're right. I do think that this, uh, of course, you can tell right here from the design language, I'm pretty sure you're right that this is from Singularity Computers, but we'll see when we take a look at their submission form, right? Um, but overall, I'm really digging uh, this overall kind of design. It's got a really cool, interesting design. We can, of course, see right here, of course, all the tubing that's running out to everything. We got some, oh, looks like this is cool. Looks like a 3D printed um, mount, which is where they actually have that stat panel. So that allows you to have that kind of cool little design there in the front, which is pretty cool. I can already tell right here that they've got an extreme board, a little bit of a bummer that we don't have the dim.2 add-in card installed, right? Just to be able to make sure that the user has access to that. But uh, I'm assuming that there's still some opening there if they want to be able to access to it. Um, I wonder though about putting an extreme board because I can't fully see it. I wonder if maybe like the hero would have been a better option, but um, it's still going to be a very cool system, right? So here we can see uh, love kind of that UV cabling. This is something that they do in a lot of their builds. We can definitely see this is an extreme board. Um, this is probably, this looks like a Maximus Z690 extreme. So it's the same motherboard that we've got right here. Absolutely fantastic, right? It's a monster board, outstanding set of features, functions, and IO that you have on here. But again, I feel maybe the hero might've been a little bit of a better choice because I can't fully take advantage of the enemy uh, matrix display on there or, or maybe some of those other items. But 
This is a very cool setup right here. We've got a mono block that's on there, cool little RGB lighting that's on display there. And then of course we've got the GPU, which is in a of course, um, vertical base mount, right? Where it's sitting up against the board, right? So um, that's a very, very cool kind of interesting design, right? But that's just the way that the chassis works, right? Um, and then I love this kind of curvature that we have going on here with the roundness that we have for the tubing. So that's pretty slick. And then we have, this is a really cool shot. I love this kind of geometry where we have this kind of uh, triangle up against, of course, this more uh, kind of square rectangular based design. And then of course they have the stat panel. This is really cool. I love the way that this kind of say that this came out right here. There's no replacement for displacement as they say. <laughs> yeah, I would agree, right? There is no replacement for displacement. Definitely this uh, allows you to go ahead and get away with just being able to displace a large, a large amount of that heat and be able to have some really cool cooling performance. Um, oh, this is cool right here. Um, one of my favorite connectors, I still have these on one of my water cooling setups that I use on my test bed. Um, and this is going to be the coolant, uh, coolant quick disconnect, uh, uh, fittings. Um, you know, these kind of aren't really that common, really not much. A lot of people aren't using them, but I absolutely love them. I really wish they, there was like an updated line of these, but that's why I still so much love soft tubing and quick disconnects because man, you can just pull stuff in and out, be able to go ahead and easily move, swap things out really, really cool. This is also really convenient for the user because they could move things around and then disconnect from the external rad, right? And just be able to have some nice flexibility, but not have that pressure of like, man, everything's all wired in. How do I, how do I access or service or, or mess with anything? Right? So it, it has kind of form eating function. And then we can see, look at those massive rads, right? We've got a whole rad over here. And then we've got a whole other <laughs> rad over here along with the distro right? So yeah, this is a pretty awesome setup right here that we have tying it kind of all together. And the color scheme is really cool. As a, as a really cool setup. Um, I, I really think this is really cool. Um, I don't even know where to leave it. I, I'm going to leave it on that image. I think that's a pretty cool image. What is everybody's thoughts here? Uh, what do you guys think about critical geometry? I think this is a very cool build. Um, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have right here. Um, so does the build have a theme? The pyramid and the monolith. I really like that. That's very, very cool. Three words to describe the build is sharp, square, and sh shapely. Definitely makes sense. Um, does the build have a name? Critical geometry. In terms of the core hardware, yeah, we've got a massive set of kind of hardware here. So this is in the, as a pyramid, um, 804L chassis, right? And then, uh, like I like I noted, yeah, it's a custom design and 3D printed sensor panel frame and stand. Then another custom design and 3D printed quick disconnect bracket. Um, also a custom design and printed um, fan um, bracket, right? With the RGB pass through that's implemented in there. And then the the um, uh, excuse me, the cable channel box that they also have in there. So all of that was work that was done on their part to kind of be able to integrate everything in there, right? And then there's a waterproof electrical conduit that's also been integrated in there. Um, you've got cables, that's their kind of custom cables that they do, which um, is really kind of their claim to fame in a lot of their different kinds of builds. Um, there's a lot of different kind of lighting that they have in there with uh, five 12 inch dark side connect dimmable um, our, uh, excuse me, LED strips that they have in their UV base, which allow those to light up all, of course, they're the, the UV that they've got going on in there. So that's why you have such nice dispersion across so many items, which makes sense. Then they've got some anodized thumb screws, right? This is a 12900K running on a Maximus C690 Extreme. Um, then on a 3090, which has been, of course, water-cooled, 64 gigabytes of memory. And they impressive. Um, they must be running probably the latest UBFI and also have a pretty strong IMC because it's pretty rare to be able to get up to 56... 100 MT in a four dim configuration. So that's pretty cool. 1600 watt power supply. Then you've got a two terabyte PCI Gen 4 NVMe SSD in there. Uh, tons of EK water cooling hardware that's all in there, including the, of course, the monoblock they have, which is cooling the, the VRM and the CPU. Um, and radiators, yeah. So Black Nemesis 560 GTs. There's two of them that are in there, and that's inside of the Singularity Computers, right? Arisha Dual 560 Water Box, right? Which is that guy right there, right? So, yes, and then there were also the coolants quick disconnects, right? So, and then some uni fans in there. So, overall, 
pretty insane budget for the system, $10,000. They were most proud of the quick disconnect bracket and the other custom pieces. Um, if there was anything they would change, possibly they were finding some of the custom pieces to even be a little bit more overall streamlined, tighten up the aesthetic maybe a little bit more. It was about three works, three weeks worth of work altogether. I'm assuming that also includes the 3D printing and the design work. It's uh, a gaming system that was designed for their client. And they were um, really happy, to, of course, to be able to use this awesome extreme board and always love the features and functions, uh, especially in terms of not only the design elements, but within the UEFI BIOS that ASUS brings to the table. Man, hats off. Very cool and kind of interesting build. It's pretty cool. Yep, that is correct. 560 rads, as I noted there earlier. Pretty cool. Uh, yep, definitely, I would say. Definitely agree. Uh, very, very cool. Separate tank radiator is like a workout. Yeah, it's a really cool design setup. Anytime you see something like this, I think last week we had a build with a small form factor um, that was similar in that. It's always really cool to be able to see it. And it definitely makes sense. I mean, um, you know, it just allows you to kind of have everything out there, right? And uh, like was noted earlier, right? You, you can't escape displacement, right? So definitely is a pretty cool um, option there. All right, so let's head over into our next build here. Uh, this is going to be, I believe, a no-name build. Okay. This is going to be from Logan. And let's take a look here. All right. And here we've got another small form factor build. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Ooh, very nice. Very nice and refined, kind of nice little clean uh, aesthetic that we've got there, right? You know, you can go black or white. Both can be really clean, and they've got different fields. When, you know, black tends to be kind of that little bit kind of more stealth kind of feel to it, um, and it, it actually absorbs colors. And then you got white, and the white tends to be a little bit kind of um, – uh, uh, softer, but it's definitely brighter, right? And it tends to kind of open up a little bit more. And so here we've got a really interesting design. So let's see what we've got packed in here, right? Uh, got quite a bit of hardware. We've got another ROG Strix Mini ITX base board in there. We've got an SFX base PSU. He's got some SATA drives. I like that. And he's still stacked in there for being able to go ahead and take advantage of all his storage. We've got a radiator in there with 240, but overall very cool, very clean. Got a little bit, of course, some uh, lift there to be able to ensure that we've got some good airflow. And we've got RGB lighting. I like that. With this little mesh panel, it gives it a nice little kind of vibe to it so that you still have a little bit of kind of visual identity. That's always kind of some of the challenge as you go to sometimes smaller form factor builds is they tend to kind of be closed off. And so they're just a box, right? Um, and you can't necessarily see a lot of the hardware, a lot of stuff. So here it's kind of cool because not only do you have a side panel, but you also have the front and you get to kind of be able to see both best of both worlds. You can see some RGB lighting. You can see still see some of the cool hardware. That does put a little bit of strain to try to make it a aesthetically a little bit more pleasing um, and also nice to you see here we're not necessarily compromising on performance by having a good mesh intake system that we have here at the front um, as we take a look here at the side definitely this is a pretty solid job i mean working in a small compact system like this is not going to be easy but we've got all the hardware packed in there it's still pretty clean and accessible right there where all the lines have been routed well we can see this is definitely super tight though look i mean we've got the sata cables just right there butting right up against the radiator all the cables right there but there are nothing that looks like it's smashing straight into the radiator here he's tied these in to bring these in a little bit so overall, nicely done. And it still has a pretty clean overall aesthetic. This folding right here is also a nice job, right, to be able to go ahead and still make sure that you're not eating in all this space, but still, of course, allowing you to make sure that you can power up your drives correctly. So overall, you know, just a thumbs up. Working in this type of tight, constrained space is always a challenge. And I think that you did about the best job that you could in this type of scenario. So hats off to you in this respect. And then as we move around here, it looks like we got a reference edition Radeon uh, graphics card in there. So, of course, we have the split pass, slip, split chassis-based design, uh, which is uh, becoming definitely popular within mini ITX builds. allows you to go ahead and make sure that you have a little bit more thermal isolation so you can still get really good thermal performance for both parts of the build, right, for the CPU and for the GPU. Um, and you don't necessarily have to have as much obstruction in terms of kind of packing it all into one same place. And then we can see right here, we've got mesh, which would make sense there for the GPU side, mesh there for the radiator that's going into the CPU. And then on the other side, right, that's where we can have the glass side panel to be able to go ahead and uh, allow us to um, have a little bit more visibility there in that kind of cool little section. So overall, really cool. And there we have it with the actual side panel on. I really like the way this turns out. It's just, 
nice, refined, compact, but it's well done and it looks cool. Um, I definitely like the way that this build turned out. And let me actually change this because this is not that build. So uh, there we go. No name from Logan. And let's go ahead and take a look here at his submission form. So um, let me see right here. So does the build have a theme? Just white and a small form factor footprint. Three words to describe the build, small, white, and beast. Uh, there's no name for the system. In terms of the core hardware, we've got actually a very high performance based system. So this is running on a X570, um, a Dash I board. So an RG Strix X570 Dash I, and then a Ryzen 5900X, um, then a Radeon 6900 XT. So BC graphics card in there. So very high performance system. Pretty much anything you want to get done on this system, you're going to be able to do it, even though this is very compact. 32 gigabytes of memory, 3600 MT. And then that's all uh, being cooled in terms of the CPU by that uh, 240 millimeter cooler, cooler master illusion cooler. And then he's got a, a cooler master 750 watt SFX based PSU, also the white edition of that power supply. He was most happy uh, in terms of just um, how much power and storage he was able to fit into such a small form factor. Budget, um, price of the all hardware together was approximately about $3,000. Is there anything they would maybe change about the build? Currently on the shopping list is custom cables to clean up the SSDs. That would make sense, but I still think it's pretty tight. I think he did a very good job with the cables right now. I mean, if you went with some ultra thin flat cables, maybe you could try to stream that out a little bit, but I don't know how much and definitely just going to be a little bit of an expense. So probably you're going to be spending at least about $150 on those cables, but and, you know, definitely, you know, you might be able to just aesthetically refine that a little bit more. It took about five to six hours putting this all together. It's predominantly used for working gaming. Top five games is some Star Citizen, some War Thunder, Elder Ring, Monster World Hunter, and then some Risk of Rain 2. He's overall a big fan of actually Armory Crate and Aura Sync uh, and was actually really happy with the way that he was easily able to go ahead and manage all the RGB lighting and sync it all together and be able to also monitor his system all within one utility. Uh, Logan, you definitely get a thumbs up from me. Nicely done. It is a cool looking compact base build. Uh, let's see right here. Greatness that only those who know the hardships of small form factor cases can understand. I would definitely agree with that. Um, when is the RG Chakra Max will be on sale in the USA? Probably at the beginning of next month is what we're going to be looking at in terms of availability. So yes, that is going to be this beautiful mouse right here, the RG Chakra. Yeah, you're going to be checking this guy out probably at the very beginning of next month. Okay. All right. Maybe the middle of next month beginning or middle, somewhere around there. <laughs> Make sure to keep it tuned. All right. Logan, very cool build, man. Thanks so much for sharing. And definitely uh, thanks for being Team RG and Team Strix. All right. Uh, let's head over to our next build. And uh, this one I think is really cool, especially being the fact that we've got a Noctua build, uh, excuse me, a Noctua graphics card. Um, this is definitely a cool build to be able to show off because it has a Noctua edition graphics card in it. So this is called Old Owl from TM Custom. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what we've got going here. All right. Ooh, very cool. I'm I'm digging this. I'm digging this. This is this is really nice. And a lot of you guys know I'm not necessarily always the biggest fan of a vertical GPU, but um, this is a really cool way to be able to show off a great looking graphics card in terms of that design. I love the color blocking that we have here, the white with the brown, and uh, I think it's a really cool design accent. And we can already see that we've got a lot of custom work that has gone in here because this is not using a run-of-the-mill kind of uh, chassis layout. So there's been a lot of customization here where this looks like actually, actually, I'm not sure what is this. Is this leather or like a PU or this is pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's actually very cool. So we've got a vertical mount, which is very interesting. Normally, I feel that eats a lot if lot into the visual identity of the hardware but here we can definitely see that we have a purposeful kind of design uh, and we also have actually one of my favorite designs that not a lot of people do which is a split type design it means that they've cooled the cpu but they've left the gpu uh, with the actual traditional air cooled configuration a lot of times i feel especially for higher performing gpu while you can get a benefit from water cooling it um you have to actually more beneficial water cooling the cpu and gpus especially if they have very good thermal solutions you don't necessarily have to water cool it and you're just adding more complexity and cost to your loop um, but 
this is really nicely done. Really nice, clean, simple lines that I like for the actual um, water cooling routes right here. Some really nice, smooth bends. These are really all nicely done. Um, I like this bend here. I'm not always the biggest fan of always memory that is uh, that you cover, but I really like this just nice, clean bend here that has a nice symmetry here. Smooths over with that white and white contact right there, but a little bit of color there in terms of the actual Team Force memory that's being used. Um, this nice silver to silver, of course, with the satin finish. It's got a really nice little stat panel that's in there right there as well. And then we can also see, it looks like we've probably got Chromax based fans in there, but overall, this is a very, very cool design in terms of the overall aesthetic. Um, I love the overall custom work right here, right? Uh, do you able to have some design language? I'm not actually sure if that's custom to the chassis or, or specific to it, because I'm not sure on this Shark Tomb chassis if that's specific to the design, but I really like the way that this came out. And here we can see this really nice stat panel integrated right here. So you can see you got all your kind of core information and measurements and markers in there. That's really nicely done. I love the little owl there, right? And there's even kind of some interesting play on terms for some of you that don't know. Before ROG Strix became ROG Strix, it used to just be Strix, AC Strix. And the actual logo for ROG uh, for Strix was an owl, right? But then the Noctua has a little owl in there as well too, right? So it's kind of like an interesting harmony and synergy in a lot of ways, right? Where it's kind of cool. I like the way that it all came out right there. Um, just beautiful looking card in there with the Noctua cards and the fans all visible. I really like the way that he handled also elevating the actual base, right? To be able to kind of create this little kind of uh, space, right? That has breathing room, but elevates the card, right? From the actual riser. Um, for the vertical bracket that's being utilized. So you don't see that because a lot of times those vertical brackets don't really look that great, right? Um, really nice, just block integration right there. Overall, this is clean, well-executed, refined, really well done. I think this is a great looking build. I really love the way that this turned out. So um, Aaron Lopez says, this is awesome. He really likes the way that it turned out. The Noctua color came through really green. And I gave, again, I think this also shows why that, um, you know, some people, when they say everything has to be the Chromax for Noctua, I definitely disagree. I think this looks fantastic. And this is using the original color, right, that Noctua has been so infamous for, right? Um, Michael says, we got some good bends too. Um, nice color to the overall match, right? And I would definitely agree with that. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the submission form. So this is going to be from TM Custom. Um, you can also go ahead and check them out on Instagram on their TM Custom page. They've also got a YouTube channel too that you guys can go ahead and check out. It was actually a sponsored base build. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, does this have a theme? Yes. Uh, perfect Noctua build. Uh, three words that they would use to describe the build is elegant, timeless, and silent as an owl, right? I would definitely expect here with Noctua being at the heart of the system that you would want great cooling performance and quiet operation. Does the build have a name? Old Owl. And then in terms of the core hardware, let's go ahead and see what we got for our hardware specs. So this is uh, running in a Sharkoon Elite Shark CA300T chassis. It's a 5800 X CPU on an ROG Strix B550 board. We've got some Team Group Extreme White DDR4 memory that's in there on an Actua 3070, which was the first card we have because we haven't released the 3080 yet. Then that's um, on a Seagate Fire CUDA 1 terabyte uh, PCIe NVMe SSD. And then also we've got, um, looks like a Sharkoon Silent Storm 850 watt power supply, and then a custom loop uh, with uh, heat killer and EK based hardware. And then coolant is CFX Ghost White. Oh, and I think actually there might be a little build video. So let me go ahead and see if I can share the build video. Give me one second, guys. Um, I will share that in a moment there. Build overall budget was about $3,000. Most uh, aspect that they're most proud of is the integration of the leather combined with the stainless steel optics. So yeah, so I was when I was saying, is this leather? This is leather. That's really, really cool. That's really, really nice. Is there anything they would change about the build? No, nothing they would change. Uh, how long did it take to put together the system? Two days. Um, and what is this system mainly used for? It was only just be, it was able to be used for kind of the build and showcase and YouTube and uh, review for actually for Igor's lab. That's pretty cool. Um, overall, let me just see here if we've got uh, the video here that I can show off. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. So there is actually, let me show you guys here. I'll link this in the chat if anybody wants to see, but there is an actual little video here that actually does go through the entire build. Uh, so you guys can actually see it come together. This is really cool. I love the actual leather work, right? You can see all this actually 
work that was put in there. That's really nice, right? Where he, this is a really interesting approach. And I don't know that I've seen that. Um, like I know Rhodes PC did some pretty cool stuff where he's incorporated some stuff like leather into builds, which has been pretty interesting because it gives it a softer kind of, some people would say more organic feel, right? In terms of kind of the look and feel of the hardware. Um, so that's kind of pretty cool. You can see that kind of all coming together. And then here, this is pretty cool. So here, yeah, we can see um, when all that leather is in there. This is really nice. I would have loved to even seen it. What happens if you didn't? If you would have actually gone with like a traditional Noctua tower heatsink and then with the GPU and the horizontal and then had that brown finish and everything like that, right? That's, I think, really interesting. Then I might have even changed it out, though. I might have maybe gone to a prime board because the prime board has some softer silhouette on the ID design. But now I'm changing it up. But I think this looks fantastic. I think it turned out really cool. And this right here, we can look like through the pass-through. That's the really cool integration that we can see right there for the water cooling, right? Um, and, of course, yeah, we can see the Chromax right there. And then, of course, the reservoir, excuse me, the radiator and the heat killer. That heat killer rad just looks gorgeous, right? And there we can see the card it all kind of coming together. Uh, very, very cool. And that ghost effects looks really, really nice in there. This is really, really nice. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and just give us the last little shot here. We can see how it kind of looks there. Hey, um, no news on that new ROG EATX Chase Best chassis, so make sure to keep it tuned. We've got some more chassis news for you definitely coming out this year, but no details that I can go ahead and break down for you yet on uh, the new upcoming chassis that we're going to have. We're going to have actually more than just one chassis, I can tell you, on ROG. We've got some other stuff coming out for some other product lines, so just make sure to keep it tuned here to the ASUS PC DIY Harder stream into the group. Uh, oh, that's a really cool little animation there. Really, really cool design. So, so much TM Custom Man, thumbs up. This is a beautiful build. I think perfect homage to, I think, uh, the Noctua Series Edition graphics card. And I think it came out great. I love the way that this turned out. Really nice, refined, clean aesthetic. So it gets a definite thumbs up from me. And a fantastic build to be able to show off here on the PC DIY Builder Spotlight. And I will go ahead and drop you guys... The link there in the chat. So if you guys want to check out that really cool video of that build, you guys can uh, go ahead and check out uh, TM Custom. And I'm going to go ahead and throw them a little subscribe from ASUS North America. Look at that. Official subscription from ASUS North America. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, we're almost getting ready here to wrap up our stream here. But we've got a couple, two builds left. So let's go ahead and jump into these last two builds right here. All right, so this is going to be, uh, let me go ahead and actually need to get that name in there. Uh, the box with no name. This is going to be uh, from Brandon. Okay. All right, and let's see what we got right here. Okay, so uh, another small form factor build here uh, with another ROG Strix Dash I board. Friends over at EK, nice little cooler right here. Very compact, nice clean cable management. Of course, always a challenge in these small form factor builds. Another uh, Radeon, that's pretty interesting. We don't see Radeon that often. So nice to see here. Nice little, just a little bit of subtle RGB lighting there with the memory and with the pump head for the AIO cooler. Just a little bit of that lighting comes through there, of course, on the side panel, right? And we've got a little bit more of that boxed out, but clean, well done, right? All the cables are managed nearly nicely. Again, in another kind of split chassis design. Nothing really to critique on here, right? It's all clean and well done and executed. And again, you know, the big thing that kind of comes through here is going to be just the challenge of getting this all really tightly, cleanly integrated, right? Uh, which is always going to be, you know, just a little bit of a challenge when you talk about doing these in these small form factor builds, right? So overall, nicely done, clean and well executed. Um, let me go ahead and see what we've got here from Brandon in terms of his build. So this is uh, from Brandon. And does the build have a team theme? No particular theme. Three words to describe the build. Clean, portable, and efficient. The box with no name for now. Um, in terms of the actual core components, this is all running in terms of a Dan A4 H2O. It's uh, got a Ryzen 7 5800X and then a Radeon RX 6800. And then he's got that on an ROG Strix X570-I board. He's got 32 gigabytes of 3600 MT memory. 
uh, an SFX 750 watt power supply, then a 240 millimeter AIO from uh, EK. He's got some Noctua NFA 12 fans, two of them, and then he's got a Samsung 980 Pro M.2 SSD, a 500 gig for his OS and his core applications, and then a one terabyte for games. Um, he also has gone ahead and added in a Lan Lee GPU 01 anti sag bracket to the rear of the motherboard tray uh, to structure to go ahead and um, structure to give the GPU some adjustable yet hidden support. Interesting. So he had to actually drill one hole for the M3 standoff with the other screw being screwed into the back of the top right motherboard mounting post. That's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. Let me see if we can see this on display here. So if we go back, did I miss that? This is the cool stuff that you sometimes we see small form factor builders do that um, you can't always necessarily see it. It is hidden. So um, that is pretty slick. That's really well done in terms of it being implemented in there. So kudos in terms of just, but that makes sense, right? Because here you've got such a big beefy card, right? You're going to get a little bit of that potential sag. So if you want to straighten it out, it's slick that you were able to do that. So thumbs up. Nice job there in that regard. Uh, let's go ahead and see right here. What was the budget overall for the build? Uh, this was a rebuild. So I really just needed the case um, and the AIO upgraded fans and then the SFX PSU, um, some new PSU cables, right? And altogether, so around $270. Um, and he also was actually able to go ahead and use some of his Hilton um, honors points to be able to go ahead and reduce some of the pricing uh, that it would have had to pay out for some of the other items. Uh, he's most proud of overall the thermal performance for the CPU and GPU temps that both dropped by about 10 to 15 degrees after moving from his old chassis, which was an H210 NZXT chassis. Is there anything you would change about the build? Maybe like to add one or two, two and a half inch SSDs, just be able to give himself a little bit more storage flexibility. Uh, beyond that, he's really happy with how it turned out and he still actually has some additional room and it's just a high performance system, right? How long did it take to build the system? It's only his second build. Impressive, especially for a small form factor build. So, man, uh, hats off to you in terms of doing a really nice job for that. And including the teardown of his old build, it took around about half a day, which makes sense. Clean and well done and very efficient. It's pretty much used for gaming, general use. So some Destiny 2 with his friends, God of War, and some Hollow Knight. Oh, definitely Hollow Knight. Really, really nice choice right there. And then his favorite ASUS feature function is having two M.2 slots on the board. This size is incredibly helpful and went from uh, the front M.2 heat sinks does make a notable difference in terms of that during gaming. So what he's talking about right here is this really cool design that we have uh, for being able to have the high quality heat sink for the M.2 base SSDs. Overall, man, thumbs up. Nice job. It's clean. It's well executed. And it, there you go, man. It fits well. And I think that for a small form factor build, that's one of the best things that you can definitely say. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up with one last build that we've got right here. And I think this is going to be from Infinite Modding by A-Run. I believe this system is called the Grogu. Um, the Grogu. <laughs> so for fans, uh, of course, of Mandalorian, let's go ahead and check a look at this cool build that we've got right here. All right, let me go ahead and load up the images. Get the submission form out. And see what we've got going on. This is, as I remember, is a pretty cool system. There we go. Oh, very cool. All right. So we've got a very cool system right here where we can see we've got water cooling definitely at play. We've actually got a cool ROG Swift Series monitor in there, too. Um, wow, there's a lot of work right here. Some really cool work right here, of course, with the integration for uh, this actually distro plate that we have, uh, which is actually at the base of the chassis. Then we've got the pump in the reservoir here. Some really cool job uh in terms of the actual routing that we've got actually for your runs right here so with some really nice bends and i love that you kept this actually with a vertical orientation for the gpu because we create a little bit more depth and contrast not only within the colors but you're able to show off additional elements plus you're able to still take advantage of the expansion which you can see right here is utilized by adding in another card so We've got a monoblock in here too, which also is going to change the aesthetic too, because we're cooling the VRM and the CPU. We're running out here, going into the distro. I really cool. This is a really cool design here, um, taking advantage of the block design with the perpendicular ends, right, which run down there too. And then of course, what we've got right here. So that's a really cool overall design and setup. So here on the front, we can see that we've got some, uh, of course, we've got the fans, the lighting, and then we've got a cool little stat panel integration in there as well. That's cool. And then we can also see that we've got a little bit more right here on the side as well. That's looking pretty slick. 
And then uh, when we actually go ahead and turn off all the lighting, we can see this. So this is pretty slick. I, hmm. I do like this, the, this kind of little kind of indent right here, but I wish like maybe there was a little bit of an accent color, something right there, or maybe a different material just to show that off. Cause that's a cool little kind of design work, a little bit of relief, what you would call relief work in there that I think has a nice, like little subtlety to it. That looks really cool that I wish just kind of came through a little bit more. And I don't know if that could be done through different material or maybe, um, touching out the, the, the accent borders there with maybe a different maybe some paint or something like that. Um, but this is cool. Um, definitely, this is kind of an interesting kind of geometric pattern, right, with the slats right there. And then, of course, the logo work right there and the little stat panel. So that's that's pretty slick. And I like this design right here. You can see how that shows up there on the reflective table. That's very cool, very well done. And then, of course, on the inside of the system, which where you can really see so much of the work done, really nice, clean, nicely done in terms of all the cable management. There's some really, again, nice bends. I love the actual tubing. Looks fantastic. And even though not a specific color was used right here, I really love the translucent kind of effect that we have going on here with the way the actual uh, tubing is working in relation to the actual coolant. And this overall kind of uh, blue and black, I think, looks really well. And then, of course, you've got a little bit of those silver accents kind of coming through, right? Really nicely done and tons of cooling performances we can see here with, of course, fans right there. We've got a radiator right there with a push and pull. And then we've got more fans down here, right? So a lot of cooling performance in here. And again, displacement really is uh, kind of taking cue all throughout this system. I love really just the nice, clean and effective cable management too, running at all the portions here from the EPS to the 24 uh, here on the GPU running out nicely and tight right there too. That's all nicely done like that color scheme. I think it looks looks really nice. And uh, let me go ahead and see if we got this mission form right here. So this is going to be from Infinite Modding by A Run. Um, and let's see right here, you guys can check them out on Instagram, Infinite Modding. Uh, so let's go ahead and see, does the build have a theme? Just blue overall was the theme. Three words to describe the build was blue, clean, and water cooling. Does the build have a name? Uh, the Grogu, because it was the player's name. Um, it's the player's name of my friend who I did this build for. Okay, makes sense. In terms of the actual core specifications, we got a Parvin Systems um, L1.8 ATX chassis with the acrylic inlaying and custom distribution plate. The distribution plate you can see is beautifully done in there and is really kind of the star of helping to enable the look and feel for this system. So that's what we're talking about right here is that distro plate. And I really like this distro plate. It's a really cool design as opposed to you see a lot of times a distro plate over here, which creates this hard perpendicular lines. I think this has a little bit of a kind of cool symmetry, which especially with the translucent effect creates a nice little layer of visibility to the secondary level of components, which looks cool, right? But it's still of course kind of that form meeting function because it's still also functional right so uh, pretty cool in terms of the motherboard we've got the crosshair 8 dark hero which is a great board especially for a high-end gaming build you've got dynamic oc switcher differential distance monitoring so many water cooling centric features uh, Ryzen 5900X in there, along with some Trident DDR4000 MT memory, a 3080Ti graphics card water cooled, along with a high-end um, AE9 uh, sound card in there. We've got some Kingston Fury uh, SSDs in there, two terabyte M.2 NVMe PCI NVMe SSD. 18 QL120 RGB fans, um, an Aqua Computer Hubby 7 internal USB hub, also an Aqua Computer Splitty 9, and then he's got that 7-inch touchscreen that has been incorporated, and that's the one I'm assuming that's in the front panel. So that's actually pretty cool that that little uh, stat panel is actually a touchscreen. So this guy's right here. That's a touchscreen. That's cool. Uh, most of the time, usually when these get implemented, they're not touchscreens. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that that's actually a touchscreen. Um the build is also then paired with the PG34Q and a PG3, uh, PG32UQ monitors. So two awesome monitors, which really complement the high-end gaming experience right here. The cables are by Pexon PCs with really, of course, the cream of the crop, MDPCX, and then some AlphaCool uh, Deutsch AOL. Pretty sweet. Um, see right here there's also some custom stuff that's done also by mainframe customs um and uh, clockwork industries as well in terms of those items so water cooling is a little bit of split of items a lot of bits power that's in there and then we have some alpha cool hardware and then that mayhems is dye ocean blue specifically pretty cool 
All right, yeah. And that mono block right there is going to be from bits power, um, in case you're wondering from the mono block, which is pretty cool because that mono block has a little bit of a split tone to it where you got silver and then you've got, of course, the clear uh, from the acrylic, which is it's a pretty cool design that's on that um, mono block. So about four thousand uh, dollars for the budget of this build. Uh, the, what they were most proud of. I love the case. It has so much room and gives plenty of space for water cooling components. But of course, I'm proud that it turned out very clear. I would definitely agree with that. Is there anything that would change about the build? More light from the bottom, but that's just for aesthetics. I could see that, and that's where, like I was saying, maybe you could do that by maybe drilling something through a little bit, maybe having a like an LED strip that kind of runs underneath there to give a little bit of accent, or like I said, maybe a little bit of contrast there in the front. But I think it looks fantastic. So regardless, about three months uh, because he had to wait for the custom distribution plate makes sense. This is the custom distro that's in there as well. Uh, what is the system used for? It's strictly for gaming. So Cyberpunk, Battlefield, Call of Duty. Um, favorite Asus function or feature is always builds around Asus motherboards. I love them for their features, functions, and stable performance. Overall, man, A Run, this is a fantastic build um, and really a, just a great showcase of just a quality water cooled system that is cleanly done um, and well executed. And I think a great showcase for what you can have with a modern high end water cooled AMD system. And definitely, I would say it looks very cool. Very nice. All right. Um, oh, no. Oh, cool. We have Aaron joining us here for the stream. Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us, man. Fantastic build. It was really cool to be able to actually talk about it. Um, definitely a very, very cool job. And I'm really excited to be able to showcase it here on the ASUS PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So thanks again for submitting, man. It's fantastic. And maybe again, we'll see something from you in the future as well. So very, very cool. All right, guys, that wraps up our ASUS PC DIY Builder Spotlight. And that wraps up our uh, PC DIY hardware stream for this week. As always, if you guys want to submit your builds, um, make sure to go ahead and join the group and uh you know uh submit your system in terms of the pc diy builder spotlight submission form and of course make sure to go ahead and join us in the group for upcoming announcements i can't tell you what's coming up but i can tell you next week two weeks three weeks who knows there's going to be a lot of really cool things that you're going to be excited about so as always make sure to join us in the group and find out about the latest and greatest hardware as we bring it out to you guys in the pc diy community with that Take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day. Today is National Rescue Dog Day. So if you guys are fostering or if you've adopted a dog, thank you guys so much for helping uh, those pets in needs. I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy my weekend with my dogs and my family as well. So take care, take it easy. Best of luck with your builds and upgrades and hopefully see you guys in the group. Take care.